What's cracking, fam? It is your boy QB Passport Flexing coming to you back with another live stream. And today we got to discuss a tragic incident that recently happened in Bogota, Colombia. And it's an unfortunate situation. And I wanted to uncover this because there's a lot to address here in regards to this tragic situation by an American man that was dating a woman overseas in Colombia. Um, I will get to your guys' thoughts and opinions in a minute after... I give my my summary of the story and and discussion, and I will open up the link to the live stream once I get going here. Um, how's everybody doing? Let me know if the mic is good. You guys can hear me well. Before I dive right on to this, uh, we got my guy Michael Allen. What's up, bro? Go Niners! Yes, you're right. We got my guy, Woody Johnson. Let me know if I sound okay, if you guys can hear me good. And I'm going to go right into this. Uh, Woody, what's up? Okay, what's good? What's good? I definitely want dis to discuss this. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here, okay? There's a lot to talk about here. So... James, what's up? Cool, cool. We got the vital message. All right. Salute. Uncle Gun's in the building. By the way, if you guys have not subbed to the vital message, go ahead and sub to the channel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I cut the gold tea, bro. Um, more, more to talk about later. <laughs> Uh, but I think I mentioned in the last live stream, I got a hair transplant. So, you know, I will grow out the facial hair. Buck, I will send the link after I dive into the story, bro, so we can talk about it. Because uh, there's a lot that I want to uncover. So, really quick here, let me go to my settings. And I want to talk about this, this incident that happened recently that a lot of people are not really talking about, to be honest with you. And it's kind of surprising uh, us being in this community and understanding that when you travel, you have to be self-aware. You have to understand that, hey, being in these foreign countries, you got to respect the people, you got to respect the culture. Uh, you can't have this sense of entitlement, which this gentleman did have, and I'm firmly against that. Okay, I'm just, you know, fixing the mic here. Um, all right, let me, let me go to this article. All right, just give me a minute here, guys, as I do this. All right. Let me know if you guys can see this. Okay. Yeah, it's showing. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. I'm just making some adjustments here. All right. We get that on big screen. So, hold on, Buck Trouble. I got to <laughs> I got to focus here. I got to focus here. All right. So anyways, um, let me discuss this, and then I'm going to get back to the chat. All right. Uh, I like it like this. Okay. So as you can see here, there's a news article. This is, I believe, from the UK. It says, taped up in a suitcase, DJ Columbia was found stuffed inside after her married Texas boyfriend 
beat and strangle her to death. Footage reveals her final hours, okay? So this guy, John Palos, right here, he was actually married. He was married, had a family, uh, and we, we can show that really quick. I, I mean, it, it's just crazy how this man would do such a thing when you already got a family, bro. Like, come on. All right. Uh, that's the wife to the left. And I believe the son has cancer. And this is the man that unfortunately removed his Colombian girlfriend off the planet, unfortunately. There's a lot that I want to cover here. But one thing is, you were married with a family. Like, come on. That, that, that's strike one. You're a father, okay? And by the way, he has three kids. Uh, and my big question here is, how did he meet this girl? But let's, let's, let's go back to the article, okay? Let's go back to this article here and unravel this. All right. So um, let me continue reading this to you guys. All right. So let me know if this is scrolling down. Uh, okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. All right. So Surveillance video has revealed the Colombian DJ's last hours of the day before she was alleged beaten and strangled by her boyfriend from Texas. The footage shows Valentina Thres Palacios, 23, stepping out of a taxi with John Palacios, 35, in the early morning Saturday a day before she was found stuffed inside a taped and locked suitcase that was abandoned in a dumpster outside of South Bogota. Whoa. The suitcase was discovered around 2 p.m. Sunday by a homeless man who was searching for recyclables. Mm -mm 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 -mm. A security camera came and picked up Trace Palosas holding Polis's hand as she walked down the hallway before approached by the DJ booth for her set at Nexus Nightclub. Uh, I believe it's this video here. Okay, which we're watching. Okay, yeah. I, I, I mean, look, hold on. Let me, let me pause here. Look at the body language. Like, look at the demeanor. Oh, wait, hold on. So sorry, guys. One second here. Yeah. I think this was like a commercial break or something. Hold on. Um, one second. Gosh, I was really diving into this. Okay, there we go. I mean, look at the demeanor of him. Just, I don't know if he's like grabbing her by the hair or by the back, but I mean, bro. <laughs> I mean, this clearly reeks jealousy um, to to the to the finest. But let's continue to play the video. All right, I believe that's her. So she's getting ready to do her DJ at the nightclub, and he's literally, you know, my. Get rid of some of this background music here. Uh, it's on another site. Okay. You know, live at the DJ booth. She's getting ready to perform. I'm just skimming through this video, by the way, all right? Bear with me. I believe this is them leaving the nightclub. Okay. That's her performing. 
I mean, just all smiles. Like, yo, I'm about to kill it tonight on the on the set on the DJ booth. All right, that's that's him right there with her. Okay, the Colombian young woman was uh, then greeted the DJ and several other people behind the turntable with Pelosos, who is reportedly married with three children, which I just talked about. Uh, Trust Pelosos finished her set shortly after 5 a.m. and then seen leaving to the office of the nightclub's owner with Pelosos in the bathroom. Let's see. Her friends told local news outlets that the couple took a taxi that was ordered through a rideshare app and then headed to the apartment that Pelosos had rented out on the north side of the capital city where they where they had moved into on Friday. Pelosi was arrested Tuesday night at the Tuckman International Airport in Panama City moments before he was about to board a Turkish Airlines to Istanbul. He also had a ticket connecting flight from Istanbul to Montenegro where there is no extradition treaty with Colombia. Wow. I mean, buddy, uh, this is pretty gruesome. I'm just going to skim through. Yeah, I don't want to see the, the whole. But this was her body right here, right there in that suitcase. If, if I scroll or I'm going to see something else, which is pretty graphical. All right. I mean, just look at that. Look at the mad face on this guy. Like, man, this is all bad. This is all bad for the for the gringo passport bros. I'm sorry. This this was an L. All right. Uh okay, let's let's continue down. Yeah, we saw that. That's him arrested. Thank goodness. Thank goodness they caught this dude. You know, that's I believe in Panama, where they were able to track him down. Before he went to Turkey. Uh, this is more information. Okay, we talked about Panama. That's her right there. I mean, nice, beautiful Colombian woman. All right. Oh, this dude right here. And, you know, for you black pillars, I mean, yes, this guy was in the chat. I, I, I get it. But... I also can't say that he was an ISO because he was married with kids. All right. So he was doing, he was established. You're good American man that, I mean, he looks like a seventh grade math teacher. Okay. But he wanted more. He wanted more. All right. I believe that's the trash can where they found her body. Now, this is really funny to me. According to the Tempio newspaper, Tres Pelosos' family said Pelosos had ties to the Sinaloa cartel, the Mexican-based drug cartel that was founded by the drug lord El Chapo, okay? Highest-ranking Colombian law enforcement agents flew to Panama on Wednesday afternoon after the court granted the Office of the Attorney General a request of Pelosi's extradition in connection to Tres Pelosi's homicide. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Pelosi's was handed over to the Colombian authorities late Wednesday and was taken back to South American country. Okay, that's pretty much the article here. This was them together before on the way, way to the club. So they have a lot of evidence on this guy. All right. Uh, this is the mark right here where they were in the in an altercation before he removed her in that apartment. You can see that scratch. Uh, poor girl's fighting for life. And this was the ticket trying to get to Turkey. And then get to Montenegro, where he couldn't be extradited by Colombia or the United States. It's looking bad for you, bro. It is looking bad for you. 
Okay, I'm going to stop sharing here. Uh, but one has to believe, like, what's good? What's good, Solo? What's good? What's good? Baja Tours, I see you guys. Bronzeburg in the building, what's good? But one has to believe why, you know, how are, how are men inspired to go travel, abandon their families, okay, and basically live a double life? And I'm going to put a lot of responsibility on you pickup artists, okay? You know, like guys like this dude here, okay? Let me, let me hide this comment. Sorry, Bronsburg. Yeah, there we go. This is David Bond. Hey, guys. You can go to Columbia, be with the baddies, all right? And we know, David, you pay for pros, okay? But, again, you influence dudes like him that have no business need to, to be listening to your content, to be traveling, to abandon your, your, your family, to be in a relationship when he already has a wife? Like, come on. Guys like him too. John Anthony. They want to live this passport life. They see it. Okay? And, and nothing's wrong with wanting to live the passport life. What up, Primal? I see you, bro. Cortez Smith. Uh, nothing's wrong with wanting to live the passport life, but you need to make the conscious decision to say, hey, I got a family. I need to take care of responsibilities. And before I enter into this life, I need to separate from my wife. Okay, I, I need to be a father and take responsibility. And if I want to go travel in Colombia and have a girlfriend out there, cool. But make sure you handle business back at home. So that's strike one. He, he was willing to abandon his family to go marry this girl, which is insane. Okay, he wanted this. He didn't want her. He did not want his wife. He said, no. If David Bond and John Anthony's getting it out there, God damn it, I got to get out there. He wanted that. All right? He wanted that. Now, of course, doing more research that I've done, uh, this man paid for, like, plastic surgery. You, you can see her her stomach is really, really flat. I mean, she looks good. I, I can't hate on him for wanting something like that, but you got to understand, when it comes to these long-distance relationships, even for myself, okay, uh, out of sight, out of mind, if the girl is very attractive, there are going to be other guys that won her. I mean, look. Look at our Instagram count. She had almost 16,000 followers. That's a lot. Okay? So, let me get this straight. You being the entitled gringo. All right? Hold on one second, guys. Take a little sip of this. Okay. You being this entitled gringo, you know that this Colombian baddie has a lot of Instagram followers. She's a DJ. She performs at these nightclubs. She's going to have options. All right. Now, you were probably the best option being you're an American. You were willing to marry her. You guys are going to move into the apartment. But as I said earlier in this stream, how in the hell did these two meet? Like, how did this happen? All right. And again, I'm not hating on this dude. All right. 
Oh wow, StreamYard, really? Man, StreamYard wants to freeze on me <laughs> in the middle of the stream. But okay, we'll, we'll keep it rolling. Uh, you you want to, you, you met this girl. We don't know how you met this girl, all right? And it's interesting because going to Colombia, a place like Medellin, and I said this a lot, okay? Uh, prostitution is really heavy out there. And that's part of the reason why I haven't went back out there. Not that I'm against pay for play, because there are a lot of guys that need to release their sexual desires out to beautiful women. I totally get it. Uh, but Colombia is known for undercover pros, okay? Pros that you meet on Tinder. They're going to hit you up with a price, all right? So I'm not saying this girl was a pro, but supposedly he met her off a dating app. It's like, wow, this guy matching with her on a dating app? For real? This dude, this dude to the left, with her on the right, all right? On a dating app. Not the nightclub, not through a circle of friends, but on an actual dating app. So I don't know if she was a, a foodie call, okay? And he couldn't resist, but him meeting a girl like that on, on a dating app is like question number two, all right? But let's just say she was a non-pro, all right? You got to know, hey, after doing my research on this girl, she's a DJ. She has 16,000 followers. She's going to be wanted by other men. Okay? Yes, he looks like a simp. You're right. He does look like a simp. All right. Uh, primal in the building. I think they have. So let me break this down really quick, okay? In Medellin, Colombia, and I got to be honest, uh, you know, a lot of passport bros, they may disagree with me or they may agree, but prostitution is on another level because of social media. So you have a lot of girls that are on Instagram, on Tinder, on Bubble, on these dating apps, and they know that American men go down there often. So they prostitute themselves because it's like, hey, I know this guy wants to get between my legs, and why not get paid? Okay, why not cash in? We know you're only here for two to three days. All right? We know that you're deprived by a lot of American women. So coming down here to Columbia, all right, I know you're going to be leaving pretty soon. So yes, $100 goes a long way out there, all right, especially in Bogota. You can get an apartment in Bogota, uh, and this is for, for information, that I know of people that live down there, you can you can rent an apartment in Bogota as low as two fifty a month, a decent one, a decent apartment. So if you have this American gringo that's willing to go out on a date with you, obviously he wants to end the night with a bang. He will be willing to pay a hundred, two hundred dollars. Yes, yes, okay. But he caught feelings. All right, he caught feelings. Uh, this dude here says uh, he kind of looks like Milano. Oh, well, you know Milano's half white, all right. Uh, but I, it, it could be Milano's cousin. It could be Milano's cousin. All right. Uh, I can't really put him in the true force monger category because again, uh, Buddy had a wife. Okay, I can't do the comparison. 
Milano, what's up with your cousin, bro? You know, he's he's going to be taking an L doing 40 years. Okay, this this jealousy, entitlement is all bad, okay? It is all bad. But I'm going to be honest. I preach to you guys to have options because I have options, all right? So, prime example, quick story. You know, my Cabo trip, I was supposed to meet a senorita from Mexico City, and she flaked on your boy. She did. I'll keep it 100. But I'm not the jealous type because I have options. So, it's like, hey, you know, you flaked on a Cabo trip when I could have took you out. No problem. I still had a good time. You know, I, I was still able to do my thing. I mean, you see that? I don't get jealous. I don't get jealous of American women, Mexican women, Colombian women. Hey, go do your thing because I'm going to do my thing. All right? And nobody's stopping me. I gotta turn down the music. But yes, your boy's having a great time. So she saw this on my Instagram stories, okay? And you best believe the attitude changed, okay? But again, when you're the jealous type, when you don't have options, Okay. I mean, unfortunately, yeah, when you don't have options with other women, you do stuff like this, which is horrible. Okay. He didn't want his wife. All right, divorce, be, man up. Just man up and say, look, I'm going to take this L. I'm going to move on with life. All right. But I'm telling you guys, with these foreign women, and and I got to be honest. Now I see the reason why these Black Pill Doomer channels are shaming passport bros. Because they know, looking like a guy, similar to the math teacher, okay? Similar to this dude here. They know that this is not real. They know. They know. They know that this is not real. Okay? But guys like him will say, that's not true. It's real. You can be like me and have a harem of women in Colombia. Mighty funny, they all speak English, by the way. All of them. You go to, you go to Medellin, uh, the, the percentage of running into a woman that speaks English is like one out of ten. Trust me on that. Your boy's been there. I've been there. And I haven't even posted the Medellin highlights, all right? But I've been there, okay? One day I will. But I've been there, all right? Let's go ahead and remove that. But he wanted to be like him. He wanted to be like David Bond. And he got big mad. He got jelly. And he removed the Colombian girl DJ. And I'm strongly against that. All right? I tell you guys, look. Having a long-distance relationship, it's going to be tough. All right? But you got to have other options. So anyways... The girl that flaked on me when she saw me having a good time in Cabo. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'll never do that again. I miss you so much. I, I, you know, there's certain behavior that I don't tolerate and I move on. But it shows that I'm pre-selected, okay? When women know that other women want you as well. And that you can replace them at any given time, they behave different towards you. All right? 
that has nothing to do with game. But this is why there are certain men that can have multiple girlfriends. Okay? Because they know, look, if I act up, if I behave bad, I'm going to get replaced. Okay? I'm not going to be going on these trips. I, I, I'm, I'm not. Okay? At any given night, I can be replaced by the next one. All right? So that's why you guys... You can't always cash it in on one, all right? You got to have a few women that you're talking to out there, that you're doing your thing, that you're having a good time, and they need to know. They need to know that, hey, I have to be on my best behavior. Otherwise, I can be replaced by another girl. I get women and they tell me I got a girl and they still holler, facts, facts, okay? But here's the thing, TSG Uncut. <laughs> Territory doesn't matter for guys like you, for guys like myself. We can do this here in the States. We can do this in Latin America. We can do this in Asia, all right? When women know that other women want you, the behavior is going to be different. The behavior is going to be different. Just got back from Mexico a few days ago. I'm having a little withdrawals like a yes. Mexico is lit. I haven't even uncovered Ecuador yet. Okay, I was going to get to Ecuador, literally, but, I mean, come on. Options on top of options. This is when I left Ecuador, all right? I'm not stressing. It's that easy. It is that easy when you have a baseline level of looks. I would never do anything crazy like this guy did, ever, okay? Because they're replaceable. If a woman does not want to get with my program, I move on. So should you. You can't invest in these foreign women. Invest in yourself. I invested in a gym membership out there, Smart Fit. I got a hair transplant, which we'll talk more about that on, a, on another stream. Okay? I invested in myself. I didn't I didn't do this tummy tuck, whatever she got. Hold on, let me get rid of my banner. Sorry, guys. He paid for this. Okay. He paid for her surgery done. I don't know if those are real. Okay. But John paid for it. He's a financial advisor. It's like, man. You have a family. The son had cancer. But yet you want to support this young woman. You greedy MF or you. Greedy. But again, when you're influenced by these guys, all right, you're going to want to tap in. You're going to say, I want to be him. I want to be just like David Bond. I want to be just like John Anthony. Hey, I'm a DJ. When they see this YouTube stuff and they go to these countries, and, and by the way, both of these dudes, they, they all pay for pros, all right? They all pay for pros. They just don't want to tell you that because they're promoting a dating product, but they all pay for pros. QB is letting you know, look, get in the gym, eat right, have options. Even if you're dating a girl that you really, really like, you still need to have backup. Okay? Because if she's attractive and you're, you know, thousands of miles away, um, 
<laughs> this dude here. By the way, this is uh, Johnny, but he's cool. Uh, they're going to have options. All right? You need to have options. And you need to let these girls know, hey, this is what I'm looking for in the future. I want a girl that's going to be submissive, that is going to do the things that I want her to do and be my wife. But you can't expect a girl, I'm, I'm sorry, 23 years old, 23, you're 35, 16,000 followers to commit to you, all right? To commit to you looking soggy in the midsection. This is not going to happen. I'm sorry. Okay? Yes, yeah, she gave you, um, you know, some good times. But you led with your status and your wealth. And I tell you guys, don't do that. There has to be a minimum physical attraction that she desires about you. If you lead with your wallet and your status, you will catch L's like him. I'm sure when she goes to those nightclubs, uh, Federico, all right, um, Tyrone, the American Tyrone, they, they all looking at her like, yo, what's up, ma? What's good? You don't speak fluent Spanish, too? Espanol muy poquito? So the only thing you can lead is with your wallet and your status. He met the family? Hold on. This guy here. No, I don't have a face filter. I shaved. Okay? Got rid of the facial hair. It's going to grow back. But no. This is me. All right. What a bronze bird said right here. <laughs> Bitches will date men that aren't attractive and will stay with them a while because, yes! Because he got the money. You said it right, Brody. You said it right. And again, no hate for this guy for wanting to have good taste. All right, that is not the problem. That's the cash up, by the way. Support you, bro. I'm almost monetized, so you guys can uh, send me super chats. You know, I try to deliver you deliver good content each and every stream, improve on certain things. Um, I thought I had some more files up in here, but uh, man. I mean, like I said, I do not blame him for having good taste. He took her to Mexico, to the pyramids. I know exactly where this is at. I took my girl there, my main, to the pyramids. Great place. All right? I'm going to be honest. Guys that are 35 and older, be honest with yourselves, okay? Okay? If you're not able to attract those type of women based on your looks, if they don't find you desirable at bars, nightclubs, dating apps, all right? You may not want to hear this, but be willing and ready to be a sugar daddy, all right? You can still do your thing with her in the bedroom, but she's going to have other options. But you got to have other options. You got to call the play and you got to stay winning. Okay, now it's one thing you move permanently to a Colombia, a Mexico. All right, you're not going back and forth like he he did, like I'm doing. Okay, the dynamics change once you live there permanently. You're there with your girlfriend, your wife. The dynamics totally change. But when you're long distance, I'm, I'm sorry. She's going to have options. That applies to me, too. If I pick up Shorty at the club, Tinder, uh, 
you know, friends of the locals, if she's attractive, other men are going to want her too. Okay? A lot of women see my Instagram stories with the main. And I'm going to have to make a separate video, but social media does matter when you're dating these foreign women. They want to know that you're not the American reject and prove it. Real talk. So when you meet these girls on Tinder, Bumble, nightclubs, bars, they're going to want to see that, okay, he's not the American reject. He goes to these places. He's wanted by other women. They're going to behave totally different. They're not going to just hit you up for money. Or when you're coming back to take me out to this expensive restaurant. Uh, we got an interesting comment right here from TSG. My uncle was 58 and be pulling hot women. Shout out to the aunt. But aunt stays in excellent shape. And he's still suave. See, here's the thing. A lot of these travelers, they disagree with me. They're like, oh, man, I still be pulling, dog. I'm 350 and be pulling baddies. What are you talking about, QB? They're still telling me that they can pull a girl like this. All right? Yeah, 350 pounds. Oh, yeah, I can, I, I, I can get her, dog. I can get her. I can slide slide in the uh, DMs or I, I, you know, I can pop bottles at the club and get something like that. This is natural Mexicana and Jalapa, Veracruz. Yeah. They're, they're, they're saying, look, QB, what, what, what you talking about? And I'm saying what, cute face, by the way, what advantage do you have being overweight? Especially if they have a large following on IG. What what advantage is it? Can you guys please tell me that in the chat? Because I'm not going to mislead you guys and tell you, look, you can be overweight and have success with women in foreign countries. No, that's not true. Unless you do pay to play, that's the only way. Guys, we'll disagree. We got 40 in the building. Get the lights up. Get the lights up. Um, guys will disagree with me all day and tell me, QB, that is not true. And I say, look, show me the receipts. All right? Show me the receipts of you meeting <laughs> these type of women Of that caliber. And, you know, unfortunately, the, the, the receipts just kind of don't add up. All right. You know, nothing against dating coaches, nothing against certain passport bros. But it's like, mm, it makes you wonder. You know, it, it makes you wonder. But I'm I'm a little surprised that... This gentleman here is not getting the publicity, but Austin Hollerman is. Okay? Kip123 is not even talking about this guy. The Peso Man is not even talking about this guy. Ask Nathaniel is not even talking about this dude. But they go after Austin. They go after content creators like myself. I'm like, what? Yes. Okay. Feminists too. Okay, you want to tag passport bros, but what what about this guy here? Huh? With the family that had a side piece in Colombia. Where's the heat for this dude? All right. Undead Chronic, where's the heat for this guy? Like, seriously. You know? And, you know. Q 
QB is definitely not racist, but let's just say if he was black, oh shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, they would have made all them flights going to Columbia $500 for, for you brothers leaving out of Miami. It would have been no more 150 flights, okay? We we would have been banned. Oh, you're going to Columbia? Oh, nah. You're, you're, you're banned because you're black. No, not happening. All right? But QB, you got Colombian men doing the same thing to their women down there too. Yeah, that's true. But the stigma is a lot worse when it's American guy. All right. I mean, you know, again, when we go to these countries, we have to move a certain way. Okay. We have to respect the culture. We are held at a higher standard. Now, the good thing I will say, a lot of these people, they love American culture. They love foreign culture. They love hip-hop music. Oh, all right. Yeah, cool. Thank you, bro. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. There we go, Primal. Yeah, definitely. I got to get back to you about Cancun, Brody. I, I I got you. I got you. They love a lot of stuff. I, 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 just, I met a lot of locals. Hey, you listen to Travis Scott? Oh, wow. You're a Niners fan? Going down there to Mexico watching the 49ers play? That was epic. I didn't realize, wow, Mexico got a lot of 49er fans. San Francisco! They love it. They love our culture. So you're going to meet a lot of foreign people that are going to embrace you. But when you do something like this, man, this hurts. This hurts me. Wait, where's she at? Um, yeah, you know, when, when you remove a girl like her, like, man, come on, dude. I don't care if he was white, black, it don't matter. It makes all American dudes look bad. And you you can't go down there with that sense of entitlement. I keep telling you guys that. Especially you black pillars. You guys, oh, if Chad's getting it, I got to get it. No, it doesn't work like that. All right. What does this guy said here? I'm a Tyrone Light, but I... Don't have the confidence to pull at home in the do. You advice getting confidence overseas and coming back. Um, well, here's the thing. Confidence comes from success. So let's just say you are a guy that is struggling to pull women here in the States but you call yourself a Tyrone Light. Well, are you really a Tyrone Light? <laughs> I got to be honest, bro, because Tyrone Light doesn't struggle. But let, let's just say that you are and you're socially awkward, okay? Because one of the gentlemen that I did help, all right, uh, he's able to attract women, but he is shy. He's a little socially awkward, and we worked on that. When you go overseas, okay, the same rules apply. Um, a woman can sense that you're nervous, that you don't have confidence. So you got to go with wingmen. You got to go with passport bros. You know, reach out to these individuals and say, hey, um, I know you travel to this place. I'm interested in going. Can I meet up with you? And, and let me kind of shadow you that night and see what they say. I welcome any and everyone Watching this stream, hey, you want to go to Mexico? You want to hit up the spots that I go to? You want to be a man? I can't guarantee you results, but at least I'm there with you to say, hey, this girl likes you. All you got to do is go dance with her. This girl likes you. Stop talk. Doesn't like you. Excuse me. This girl does not like you. Don't talk to her. Leave her alone. Okay. 
So I can bring that social awareness to you and let you know. Uh, TSG Uncut, yes. Play-Doh Carmen. Yeah, uh, Primal Studies is thinking about going to Play-Doh Carmen. Cool, that's what's up. Play-Doh Carmen is great. Great nightlife. Lots of things to do. You guys will enjoy it. Uh, and we got LFA in the building! Go sub to this guy's channel. Man, LFA, you're thinking about going to Spain this year? Brother, you will kill it in Spain. The fine Spanish European señoritas. Oh, man, it's, it's going to be epic. Uh, LFA has a lot of good stuff. Okay? He wants guys to self-improve like myself. He gives good advice. He tells you to hit the gym. He tells you to not be jealous. All right? Uh, yeah, so go sub to his channel. Thank you for stopping through, LFA. Uh, yes. Okay. This is normal. This is normal. You're socially awkward, and I'm going to have social anxiety. See, the problem is a lot of guys, they just watch YouTube all day and sit on their fucking ass. All right? You got to go out to the real world. And social skills are important. Even if you just say, hey, I only do online dating. I totally get that. All right. But the problem is when you meet girls online and they know that you don't have social skills, you don't know how to interact with their You, you can't tell whether this girl's interested in you or not. That becomes a problem. That becomes a big problem. So you have to get used to talking to the bartender, talking to other people there at the establishment. For me, it's easy because I've been doing it a long time. Um, and again, going out there to Mexico, they think I'm a basketball player. And that's it. We talk about Lakers. We can talk about sports. Hey, bro, I'm having an after party. There's going to be a lot of hot girls. Do you want to come through? And I make the judgment call. All right? Uh, Baja Tours mentioned Monterey, Mexico. Yeah, I make the judgment call. Uh, prime example, when I was in Monterey, uh, there's this rich area, San... San... Uh, I can't pronounce it, but it's the Garza area. Anyways, Monterey has a lot of rich Mexican people. We're talking like Beverly Hills. Dude invited me to his uh, apartment overlooking the city. There were beautiful women there. We were smoking hookah, having drinks. Great time. Makes American money balling out there. If you guys go check out my Monterey video, it's the scene um, where I'm out in the pool and stuff. And he gives me a tour of his apartment. It's that guy. I met him out at a bar. Chilling by myself. Came up to me. Spoke to me in English. Yeah, I know you ain't from around here. But hey, what are you doing out here in Monterey? Now, could he been with the cartels and, you know, kidnap me? Absolutely. But I didn't feel those vibes. All right? I didn't feel like my life was uh, in jeopardy. And we're still friends to this day. Uh, heading out to Guadalajara on Wednesday. Guadalajara is dope. I have a lot of highlights on Guadalajara that I have not even shown yet on the channel. Huns. If you like Medellin, Colombia, Guadalajara is the Medellin of Mexico. But, but I got to put a disclaimer. No P2P. All right. There are a lot of beautiful women in Guadalajara. Very Eurocentric. Matter of fact, hold on. Let's see if I can pull up one. You know, QB is all about the receipts. Okay. This girl is from Guadalajara. This was the homie Bacchus who I had in the live stream. She is from Jalisco. All right. 
That's how they looking down there, man. All right. Yes. Guadalajara is in the house. You will find a lot of beautiful. I mean, she looks like a Mexican Rihanna to me. You will find a lot of beautiful women like her in Guadalajara. All right. Big facts. Uh, I, I was trying to pull up a girl that I used to talk to in Guadalajara. Um, I got to find it later. <laughs> oh, right here. This girl right here. She's from Guadalajara as well. All right. Colored eyes. Natural. Yeah. All right. Non-pro. Disclaimer. So, yes. You are winning over there. Uh, Jesus rocks. I'm 6'4", tattoos, great face. I know I can pull, but I had that real bad social anxiety in America. I have pulled before, but I'm not even doing half as good as I think I can do. Well, again, I don't know where you're from, what territory that you're in. But just make the conscious effort to go out and talk to people. Uh, but you have to understand attraction, all right? Because a lot of guys, they go out and they don't even know that the girl likes them. I got to tell Johnny, okay, who is my wingman, anywhere where I take this guy uh, in Mexico, he pulls. No problem. Let me see if I can bring up Johnny really quick here. Uh, him. I got to tell Johnny, and he lost the weight. Yo, this girl likes you. This girl thinks you're cute. This girl is staring at you. Go talk to her. Like, he doesn't know. Okay? But he's improving. Okay? So sometimes it takes that guy to like point that out. And then when you do what he says and you see the results, then you're like, oh, wow. Okay. When Johnny went to Veracruz, I'm like, look, do exactly what I tell you to do. And you're scoring a touchdown at the end of the night. And he did it. He did it. But again, there are a lot of guys that are not self-aware. So self-awareness, okay, this is interesting. Self-awareness can be taught, but charisma can't, okay? A lot of these game guys will say, uh, yeah, charisma can be taught. I, I don't think so. I think it's a, a strong personality trait that only a few people have. I don't think you can teach charisma. But you can teach social, social aware, awareness, excuse me. Mm. Hold on one second here. Since I had this transplant, I've been on a lot of different medications and stuff. But you can teach social awareness. You can teach uh, recognizing attraction. All right, because a lot of that has to do with body language of the woman, the way she looks at you, how close does she get to you when she talks to you. All of those elements are very, very important. And eventually, I'm going to have to make a video. You guys are going to laugh, but it's the truth. The strip club and the brothel is literally no different from the nightclub. They are very, very, very similar. Okay, and I'll explain why on another video. Yes, hit me up on IG. Uh, also, you can hit me up uh, via email, and we can talk about that tour to Tijuana because Tijuana, okay, is popping during the summertime. It's the best time to go. Um, where you have options uh, in Rosarito, obviously, in TJ, etc. So, yes, you will not lose if you come through with your boy QB. 
All right, so hit me up and we can discuss that. Uh, I'm going to open up the panel, all right? And I want to hear your guys' thoughts related to the subject. Uh, what for? What should guys not do when they're in an overseas relationship? Because my best advice is, look, you yourself, you got to have options. You got to be talking to other girls, all right? And you got to make that known. I think having an Instagram is very important when dealing with women in another country. It doesn't have to show you with a lot of women, which, by the way, you know what? Let me bring up my IG really quick. Hold on. And then we're going to open up the panel. All right. By the way, get the likes up. Subscribe to the channel. If you have not, go ahead and sub to the channel. All right. Uh, I'm going to share the screen. Hopefully you guys can see this. Show my Instagram. Okay. This is QB's IG. All right. This is one girl that I met in Cabo. All right. You know, she's out with friends. Look at her doing her thing. Okay. I'm not jealous. Hey, go do your thing. Wow. She's taking it to the head like a champ. Ooh. Uh, this is another girl in Tijuana that I met. This is another girl in Mexico City. All right, cool. Yeah, Venezuelan girl on the right. Man, she looks, her friend looked good too. Oh, wow. All right, that's the homies out there in Philly. But let's go to my, my gram, all right? Let's see. Why does it not want to go to my profile? Okay, there we go. All right, boom. Black pill stuff. That's me on the yacht out there in Cancun. This is the main right here. And no, she's not on Instagram, so don't even try to find her. All right, that's me out there in Cabo. But when women see my gram, they'd be like, wow, this guy travels, okay? This guy has a good time. This guy... You know, into stocks and stuff. That's cool. Uh, yeah, that's a nice, nice photo there. But they see that I'm an active person. That's me out here actually in Colombia. They see that I'm very active. All right. They they really see that I'm active. All right, you guys get the point. This is important. This is like your. Your driver's license, your ID that, hey, I'm not a creep. All right? I do cool stuff. I'm conquistador right here. Uh, this is actually in Veracruz. So it doesn't have to be wild and crazy, okay? You don't need to have, like, 50 million girls, but you need to show something like, hey, I'm, I'm active out here. All right? I'm doing things. I travel, I'm pre-selected. I mean, there's some guys that they don't have girls on their IG. Okay, cool. I mean, I do, but you don't have to, but you just can't show that you're the loser. All right? You can't show that you're you're the loser back at home. All right, just post the, the link in the chat. Anyone can come on the stream. We can talk about the situation here and uh, with the guy removing his girl in Colombia. But look, you guys can't be self-entitled. Okay, looks do matter. All right, we got we got the homie bug travel here. I just gotta put on the shield and make sure it's you, bro, because I'm telling you. Okay. Oh, all right, all right, gotcha. All right, cool. Yeah. What's good, Buck? Um, How are you doing? Hey, uh, let me tell you about Peru. And, and it goes back to the looks thing, right? Uh-huh. Spent no dollars on a chick, no play, play for play or anything. Chicks were showing me attraction. And have you been to that Smart Fit at uh, uh, Mary Flores? The one right next to the beach? Uh, the one at uh, near the park. Uh-huh. 
And there was a fine looking uh, personal trainer chick. Right. right. Yeah, but, but it goes back to the point that what I was trying to say is like, looks matter. A lot of guys don't understand, but yes. looks matter. When you work on yourself on every aspect of life, you're going to see the results, man. Like these chicks going to show you love. Like you can't be something like 680, 280 uh, pound dude coming over there looking like crap. You know, at that point, they, the chicks are only going to use. Right. Right. What up, Brody? What up, uh, Nomadic Nori? What's Janice, good? Like, you got to you gotta be a true. You got to be physically attractive to these women, you know, in order for them to like genuinely like you, you know, more so. Like if you take away the money aspect, like say, for example, if a dude go out there just with no money, they're not going to show him love. Right. But if he's in the other aspect of the uh, uh, to it, then, of course, yeah. they're going to show him, uh, you know, love. But, you know, it, it just goes back to the point, like, uh, you know, like physically being physical attractive really really matters in these countries uh if you're trying to get that genuine love like you got to be physically attractive to them right they got to be physically attracted to you right uh what, what's your thoughts brody uh, n- uh nomadic nori yo what's good it's uh nomadic noir it's like oh okay it's for black but okay. um no i I gotta say, I'm uh, right now. I'm just in Mexico City. Uh, I've been here for a couple months. Um, nice. I'm heading to Guadalajara next. But um, nice. it's it's crazy out here, man. Like basically, I'm I'm sort of like a, a introverted type of guy for the most part, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, so I use like Tinder and Bumble a lot. But um, man, these these women out here, like they they <laughs> they love us, bro. Like. They right. really do. They really, really love us. Like, so I got a couple of questions for you. How yeah. long have you been in Mexico City? Uh, how has the dating scene been for you, being an introvert? Because Mexico City, yeah, there are a lot of women out there. Uh, I mean, it's it, it is great for any bachelor type of guy. Yeah, uh, whether you're overweight, older, uh, young, like they're. No, I will be honest. Throughout Mexico, you're gonna look smack. So I mean, uh, looks match. So mm-hmm. don't expect to be like a 300 pound dude to be with like a fitness model. Like it's not gonna happen. Yeah. No, but, it's, but it's, go ahead. It's crazy. Um, so I've been here for two months. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, I, I don't I don't really go. I go out. I go out, but I don't like drink or anything like that. So usually when I go to a bar or a club. I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just like hang out with my friends or anything something like that. But usually the way I do it is I'll meet a girl on Tinder. Um, I'll take her out to a bar. I'll buy her a couple drinks. Usually what, like one drink, usually. And um, they're pretty quick about it. Like if they like you, they'll throw you signals or start touching your hand. They'll make eye contact. They, they don't really have any problems with like kissing in public. You know, they don't really have any nice. problems with going back to your place that night. Uh, nice. So things have been really good for me. I mean, I'm an older guy. I'm a little bit overweight, you know, and I've been pulling yeah. like, women half my age, you know, women who are like oh, out of my league. Um, <laughs> seriously, like I know how to, I know how to talk to women. I'm not really like shy or anything like that. So right. I have that advantage, but. And and, and 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 let me ask you, uh, what area are you from? The states, if you don't mind, and what yeah. made you choose Mexico City? I'm from New York. I lived in okay. I lived in Brooklyn for the last ten years. Uh, Mexico City's the biggest city in North America. Um, right. So coming from New York, I wanted to have kind of like a city vibe. I never traveled outside the country by myself before, so. I was like, you know what? Let me uh, check out Mexico City. See, what, and and plus, I'm um, I work um, I work in tech and work in tech, so like a lot of digital nomads uh, are in Mexico City right now. So, oh, that was- okay. Yeah, but I don't really hang out with a lot of gringos a lot because, you know, I'm right. from the. So I don't need. I don't and, really. And and what area are you in Mexico City? I'm I'm thinking. Um, I lived in. 
So I lived in um, Kendessa for pretty much a month and a half. Um, yeah. And then I moved, last week I moved to Roman Norte. Um, yes. But that's sort of like a little more, uh, it's a little more like white and like bougie, a little, it's not really like my vibe. So I'm, uh, I just moved to uh, another smaller neighborhood called Navarte. Uh, so I'm here until Wednesday and I'm going to Guadalajara on Wednesday. I'm okay. staying, I'm staying okay. in uh, Americana in Guadalajara. Okay. But Polanco's yeah. supposed to be dope. I never, I haven't been there, but Polanco's supposed to be dope. But um, yeah. I would recommend, like, if anybody's coming to Mexico City, uh, stay in either Kendessa or Roman Norte, because there's tons of bars, restaurants, clubs, tons of tons of women. Everybody's outside. It's like 75, 80 degrees every day. Um, so, yeah, I would recommend those two neighborhoods for sure. Do you hey. wanna- this is what this is what he's kind of speaking to. This is one of my videos out in Mexico City. I'm just gonna like kind of skim through it as we're talking. Yeah, it's um, wild. Here, man. I mean, and they got everybody. Like, I, I'm I'm in tonight because I just I just crushed this Colombian chick like at 3 p.m. So I was I'm just oh. chilling tonight. So it's like right, and so. <laughs> did you meet the Colum- did you meet the Colombian girl off of uh IG or uh I meet everybody uh, on or Tinder? Yeah, everybody I meet is like Tinder or Bumble. So I I basically um I pay for Tinder. I have the platinum platinum Tinder, mm-hmm. so it's like I, I can swipe as much as I want, I can see who matches me. And then with Bumble, mm-hmm. I pay like you do like a one time payment on Bumble. And you can, you're like, you're, it's like a lifetime payment, you know? So the, the women on, right. like on Bumble, the women have to talk to you first. So that's already like half the battle right there. Established. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. So no, that's good. Um, man, Mexico City is lit. Now you're getting ready to go, go to Guadalajara. How <laughs> long are you going to be out there in Guadalajara? Guadalajara. So I'm going to be there for a month. I'm going to be there for the month of February. But I changed my Tinder location to Guadalajara, and oh my god, right. like I have so nice many things men- out there. They are gorgeous. They are gorgeous. Mm-hmm. They're like I don't even know. They're like nines and tens. They're like eights, nines, and tens. Like all of them, right. even the older ones, even the moms. Right. So, w- right? W- would you would you say your Tinder matches are better? In- and Mexico City or Guadalajara? Guadalajara. I, I think Guadalajara for sure. Like, <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> okay, so here's the thing too, though, is because there's so many different types of, there, like, there's so many people here in Mexico City that you get, like, you get everybody. You get, like, the working class folks. You get everybody. And, like, Guadalajara, I think it's, like, a smaller city. So it's, I don't I don't know what it is, but the women out there are right. bad, bro. They, right. they are bad. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Right, right, yeah. Um, you want to go check out Zapopan area in Guadalajara? Uh, see, um, yeah, I think see, you're right. We, we got somebody on here. Yeah, and Bronzeburg. Okay, cool, cool. Hold on, hold on. Let's see. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the Hello, stream. Lovely. Peace, y'all. Hey. hey, what's good? What's good? Uh, I heard about the ahead. viral story. Why is this yes. troll here? Which... I'm not a troll, bro. You not are a troll. That. Anyway, yeah. QB, what, what's good, G? Yo, um, what, you need what, to just holler at me, what, son? What, what, yeah, well, welcome to the stream. Happy to have you here. Um, so I'm gonna go one by one by one. Um, so, Miss Margaret, what's your thoughts and opinions about you know this this recent that event? That stuff is wild. I've heard about that. I just think that's so bizarre that he went over to another country and then like, oh my goodness, like over in different territories, a lot of them believe in like just death penalties, especially if you like from a different country. Like, 
Like there was a guy who went over to China and he committed a crime. They didn't wait. They didn't. They, they didn't even wait. Um, he he killed his um. He was a passport bro, but he went over to China, murdered his girlfriend, and they didn't even wait for Americans to get back, like to see what they wanted to do. They just China people just sent him straight to the death penalty. Like, like, like I didn't know, I didn't know you could override American you know people. I didn't know you could do that. That's not a passport, bro. That's just some random dude who happened to has a passport. Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I kind of agree on that. Um, yeah. But uh, I felt like I didn't know you could do that, though. Like, I didn't know other countries can do that. Like, uh, but if you think about it, American people, they're not going to, they're not going to, like, they're not going to go to a war for, like, one person. You know what I mean? Like, like if they hand over one person, they're not going to go on a full-blown war now that I think about it. But, like, yeah, he committed a crime over a different, you know, country, and American people are not going to, you know, you save him. You know, I don't think they're going to wait until Americans get back to see what they want to do with that guy who murdered his girlfriend over in Colombia. What was it? Brazil or something? Colombia? Columbia. It was Columbia. It was Columbia. It's crazy. Yeah. It seems very dangerous out there, though. I it hear everybody be. bragging about uh, Theo lot. Or, uh, Thailand, sorry. Thailand sound pretty safer than what I've heard in Brazil and, you know, all of those other places. But, yeah, stay safe, y'all. Right, definitely. Bronzeburg, uh, what, what's your thoughts and opinions, Brody? And welcome. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for having me, bro. I mean, it's just a case of dudes getting in a fee-fees, as I call it. They get jealous right. because, you know, a woman is doing her thing. She has notoriety. And my thing about it is dude walked into a situation he wasn't capable of handling. You know, he fell into the, I believe he fell into the lust. And um, the fact of the matter that the woman was hot. And so. He was beautiful. He, I wish I looked like those. Latinas. Can you stop I'm talking, beautiful. you troll? Stop talking. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking right now. Like so be quiet, Thank man. You. Be quiet while I'm talking, We're troll. We're she uh, troll. Uh, oh, stop okay. talking. Uh, hold on, I just muted her. Uh, I I don't know her. Do y'all got like bad blood? Because like, not, not... all right, this chick is a troll, man. She corny. Every single time she come around on stream, she's gonna start talking about nonsense about colorism and all this nonsense, bro. She I does that on every colorism. stream. I don't believe in colorism. Yo, troll, she stop talking while I'm talking, man. Okay, um, Margaret, I'm just you can come back a little later, but um, I was up yeah. here fine to this guy, I, I don't know what's wrong I, with him. I, 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 I know, I'm just I'm just gonna remove you just really quick, all right? Okay, I mean, women are welcome here, <laughs> okay? Uh, she can come back a little later, but go ahead, Bronzeburg, go ahead. Yeah, I was saying, um, you know, I, I, it's like it's like this, man, because this is a thing I have to say, man. A lot of radical stuff that's happened with, you know, things that's going around with dudes from America going to these countries is that people have to be aware that's going to fall on uh, people making erroneous claims on passport bros. And it's unfortunate because. You know, not, you know, I know the, the the thing about passport bros, they move different. So as soon as they see something like this, they attribute it because the dude is American. Oh, passport bros. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, my opinion about dude, you know, like I said, man, you got to learn. You got to learn. It's not even because she's a foreign woman. It's just a fact of the matter. You got to learn who you dealing with, man. So yeah. when you when you um you out here and, you know, you so happy to be sitting up there talking about going to another country and meeting these women. And you find out that she's a pretty much a big deal and she got a social following, man. You gotta be able to deal with that. Either you can or you cannot. You know right. what I'm saying? Like yeah, I know I'm the following. coochie is good, but I have some damn consciousness as a man. Right. Sixteen thousand followers, Tyrone Federico. I'm probably sure other American DJs were sliding through that those DMs. Like, oh wow, you DJ? Oh, uh, how about you come to Spain and come DJ over here? Etc. And he got jealous. Uh, Black Man's Travel, what's good, bro? What's your thoughts and opinion? Hey, what's going on? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. All right, cool. Yeah, man, Um, it's kind of sad, you know. This is not the first time that an American passport guy actually done something like this. This is very common. You have a lot of guys with passport with hurt feelings, with a lot of emotional baggage, insecurity, jealousy. And when they do meet a, a beautiful woman that they're not accustomed to of dealing with, 
they get in their feelings, man. They do stupid shit. So this is not the first time. I mean, I've been doing this shit for 20 years. And, you know, the, I mean, you know how I move, man. And yes. um, when I heard about that story, man, it was just like, yep. He was insecure. She was doing well. She was getting a lot of tensions, and a lot of guys not used to that. And this is kind of sad. It's kind of sad. And the fact that the way he killed her, man, that was that was very personal and brutal. For right. her to do all that, and I, I seen the I seen the body, I seen the right. suitcase, everything, man. I yes. seen the pictures, yes. and yes. I'm like, wow, this man for him to pull this and and remain calm throughout the entire process. That tells you what type of monster he was. But um, right. dude, like I told you, there's a lot of hurt guys with passports, man. A lot of dudes think that, you know, they're going to go overseas and find a wife and think that things are going to solve everything, but it's not. You got a lot of dudes with emotional baggage that need therapy, man. And I talk about this at a lot of my platform, man. It's just dudes be trying to, you know, they're not used to dealing with a beautiful woman. They do they do find one that realize that, hey, she could do better than you. They don't like that shit. Right. Let me say right. something, though. Let me, let me oh. just throw something out there. You notice what he looked like, right? Yeah. A fat, sloppy, yeah. regular dude. We don't no 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 no. I'm just saying a lot of you know you know what ser all the serial killers in America and none of them look like me. I mean none of them look like QB passport, you know what I'm saying? So, you are the body, man. I, I'm just saying I'm just saying like hey, I know how it's an example. The same thing happened in China, except it was a brother and he did the exact same thing to his ex Chinese women. And, and oh, what wow. they did is they gave him the death penalty after that. Yeah, I heard about that news, right? It happened, I no. think, a year ago. But it was the same thing. The dude fall in love with her. He found out she was cheating. And, and you know, he, he he deleted her, you know. So what the Chinese authorities got a hold of him. Uh, what they did is, like, they arrested him, uh, put him in trial, and they gave him the death penalty uh, the same day. So... You know, uh, that's one thing a lot of guys don't understand. Is like when you go overseas, yeah, you have options, but you also got to realize a lot of these girls also have options. So Thank you. Can, you. So you must Thank be you. Terms to that. Like at the end of the day, you know, uh, she's not yours. It's just your turn. You know, half. Yes. I mean, book travel. Book travel made a valid point. Look, guys, even though you got a passport and you're out there in these countries, these women are gorgeous. You don't think she has options within her country and other foreigners? If she's on Tinder and you met her on Tinder, there's a good possibility that other dudes are talking to her as, as well. So when you get on this plane and come and visit her, and you go back on that plane, there's another guy coming back, coming into the airport that, that may want to see her. That's probably better. Right. What happened? And, and so, no, no, I, I totally agree. So when I tell dudes, like, you know, looks do matter – it plays a role because if you're not like her number one option, like sexually, she's going to be seduced by other guys that she finds attractive. Mm -hmm. And there's yes. nothing you can do about that, you know? But that's just the game everywhere. Like, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this right now, guys. I'm in Miami right now. I'm in Wynwood. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Miami. I'm from Miami. I came home to visit my mom. And I'm driving around yeah. Wynwood yeah, area. Yeah. Uh, Win Win Winwood, uh, Winwood, uh, what's the other place? Uh, the other place, uh, East. Uh, I mean, it's Brickell. There's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of city, but yeah, Bronzeville, but, Liberty. Yeah, city. but what I'm, yeah, but what I'm trying to tell you guys, there's tons of gorgeous women here, and the thing is, they got a ton of guys out here that always have a, that's a way better situation than you are. There's a possibility she's not a good girl. She may creep on you. Is what it is. That's why I always tell guys I'm like, kind of like you, uh, Q QB. You always got to work on yourself physically, mentally, financially, yes. spiritually. Yes. You know, make you know work on yourself because guess what? You always in competition. Even me, I'm 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 approaching 45 years old. I'm always in a I'm always in competition, even at 45. Right. So guys, I mean, it just look if your girl decide to move on, hey, take it for what it is, get over it, move on. There's a lot of women out here for you, especially you got a passport and you're traveling. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. There's more fishing to see, you know. I mean, I mean, yeah, but also too, just work on you. Make sure you're good because again, you have a lot of guys that have these emotional hangups. Yeah. And man, dude, they they find a good girl, and you know, they realize like, hey, she leaves him, his life is over. So guess what? He's gonna do something stupid. So it's but just like, like guys, just understand that you got, you gotta have you gotta have abundance mentality. But it's mm -hmm. sad to see a lot of men have a scarcity mindset, not abundance. It's like they That's say though. 
um, who you are in the States is who you are overseas. So if you're kind of like, you know, weak minded in the States, just because you go to a different country doesn't mean that you're going to be a different person, you know, and it doesn't mean that you're going to react to, to the certain situations a different way. Still, you're still going to be the same person. So. Yeah. No matter before going to Mexico City, did you travel anywhere else outside of the States? Uh, no, this is my first time traveling by myself, well, by myself. Like I've gone on vacation and stuff like that, but I've never just gone somewhere by myself and lived there for a minute. Okay. Why not? What's the, what stopped you from doing that? I I didn't have any money. I was broke. Like oh, okay, at least you be honest. Is sort of uh, it's a luxury. You know what I mean? And I wasn't in a place in my life where I where I had the luxury to do that. I was living hand to mouth. You know. Okay. Right. And what are you doing now to put yourself in a better position? I'm a software engineer. All right. Cool. Cool. Good. Yeah. I'm in. I'm in the tech space as well. So, like, as long as you you keep yourself competitive, learn learn new skills, you know, always have that competitive edge, you're gonna be all right, man. You can start traveling. I've been in the tech space for 20 years, so I, I totally understand that. Right. Yeah, this is uh, a black man's travel. Uh, you definitely got to work on yourself in every aspect of life. You know, every aspect, mentally, financially, looks, every aspect. You know, but it it it, just, it really goes back to the point, man. A lot of these guys they're not used to dealing with these type of uh, women overseas. You know, here in the states, and when they go overseas, it's like is is it is a shock to them. You know, they see this feminine woman and all that. And they think this feminine woman is going to be loyal to them. They think this feminine woman is going to be their only option. But they don't realize that this chick has many other dudes, you know, hitting on her. I mean, she messing with the local dudes. She messing with dudes from Australia. She messing with dudes from Canada. She's not just messing with you. So that's what a lot of guys don't understand. So, so he got that. Uh, this dude, he was just a jealous dude who got angry and uh he put he all was that a leftover sloppy white dude like honestly he's not he wasn't even like like and that's why i didn't like with the um at the top uh with a cute hat on i wasn't uh trying to be rude in the comment section i just think that it shouldn't really be made about race because like it's not like all white guys are like that or like like right. it's just well, like the well, ones with super low self esteem, like leftover ones. But, really. but he was married. Let me clarify. He was married with three kids. Like yeah, he was. Yeah, he nothing was to lose. He had a lot to lose. To him, that was nothing. Really. Right. What is right. It? I know some guys of all cultures who have so many kids, but they'll still go to jail for murder. Like it's just like to them, that's nothing really. To a crazy person. Right. Uh, Zerkwe, what's up, bro? I see you here. You want to chime in? Yo, are, are you there? Going once, going twice. I, I unmuted him, but he's not saying anything, so maybe he can come back, but go ahead. Hey, can I say something about the race thing? Uh, yes. I wasn't go, there for that. Go, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Black Minister. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think, yeah, this goes beyond race. You know, there's a lot of guys like him who are black, Hispanic, Asian, Indian, who do yeah. these stupid type of things. I did not, yeah, I don't think yeah, it's he a mostly race got caught up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, this, and, not, this is not a race issue. This is a, more of a jealousy issue, a, a, a dude yeah. who was jealous, you know, and uh, unfortunately, it's, it's actually common in these... Uh, these travel spaces, man. Can I say something about the guy? I really feel like, because just looking at the guy, um, he seemed very short. And I love short guys. I've always dated short guys. Am I echoing? Because if so, I need to get on a different device if I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and change that, and then we'll, we'll let you back in. Okay. All right, uh, Murray, what, what's going on? Yeah, I'm going to have to disagree with bro saying, like, you're the same person overseas. Because when I went overseas... I had a different personality. I was more outgoing. I had more choosing signals. I'm not sure where where he got that from. You know, so where 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 exactly did you go overseas? Yeah, when I went to the Dominican Republic, I never had so many so much female attention in my whole fucking. I mean, life. wait, 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 wait. Hold on. I, hey, hold on. Let me cover this for a second. 
Let me cover Go this ahead. one. Go ahead. I got this, bro. Don't say you want to steal. Don't say you want to steal. When we say the dude is a simp, when the, when the dude is simp in the States, he's going to be a simp uh, overseas. We're talking about the same dude that's paying for these OnlyFans checks and all that, simping in the States. He's going to go down there doing the same things, buying these cheapest iPhones, the latest iPhones, all that stuff, just simping. Oh, no. But well, if that, you well, over that. here, you're going to be a simp overseas. That's what we meant. Oh, Back okay, to okay. Travis, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. No, I ain't, I ain't been no all story. right. Picture. Okay. I, I, I have a list of questions for that gentleman. So you said you went to DR and you had a, a whole different personality. Where yeah. in DR did you go? I went Which to city? and it was the Infinity Club, and we went to Santo Domingo. No, 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 no. I said, which city did you go to? I went to Santo Domingo, and I went to Punta Cana. Those are two. Punta Cana, places. okay. And um, when they were giving you choose a signal, was it based on because you were an American, or was it because they were physically attracted to you? I am physically attractive, you know, because I'm very tall. I got a lot of muscles and stuff, so... I don't, I don't, I'm not sure if the chicks here, like, they were more, just more open than American chicks. I didn't let you know, like, off the bat, they're, they're, they like you, like, at, like, as opposed to here, like, you would have to initiate everything. So that's what I meant. It's just like more, they're, they're just like more open for some reason. I'm not, sure. because, because I'll tell you this, I, I'm in DR a lot. I was just, I just got back from DR after 30, 30 days. Uh, I have investment properties out there. So I'm out there a lot. And I can tell you, a lot of the Dominican women, you got to be careful. You know, sometimes they see you as a come up. And, um, you know, they'll give you the choose a signal because it's part of their culture. It's like they'll look at you. They expect you to come up. They'll, you know, if they obviously if they're interested in you, they're going to look at you and smile, whatever. But majority of Latin women do that from Mexico to Colombia to Puerto Rico. They all kind of do the same thing. American, you know, American women, I can't say women, but just things here are different. But um, just just be mindful. It's like when you say that you, you had a different personality. Were you being yourself or were you just being someone extra? Yeah, I was just like, you know, you know how you, like in America, you got to be a little more reserved. Like you can't really do like you, you want to show your true personality, but you can't really like express it because you don't know if a bitch might take shit the wrong way. But like overseas is just like I was just more open for some reason. I'm not sure why the fuck that was, man. But, you know, that was I like, mean, it, it could be it could be that the fact you were comfortable, you were comfortable in an environment where, you know, you could be yourself. I granted, I mean, granted, here in the United States, you got to put on a lot for most cases. And the thing is, here in America, a lot of people pretend to have something, but they really don't have shit. So I totally understand that. But just understand that when you land in America, you're just there to have fun. Um, if you're trying to find a good girl or whatever, they're not in the clubs. Yeah. I, I, have, that right I have a now. question. So, Go ahead. But, I pretty soon want to be a passport girl. How much are the boob jobs out there? <laughs> I will say this. I will say this though. I mean, you guys are out there a lot, and it's cheaper out there, right? Like, I will say, I will say this though: the 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 people, not just the women, but just the people, are a lot more open. Yeah, that's a lot more friendly. At least here in Mexico, I can't speak for other countries, but they're a lot more like you know. I'll, I'll, I'm sitting down at the cafe, minding my business. A couple comes and sits down. When it starts, I don't know. Yeah. They just it's say, like, it's, 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 "That's just how it Can is." Can I give you guys a compliment? When you when you're in the dr, like bitches approach you. Like I never had a bitch approach me in my life. What the fuck was that? Damn. Which <laughs> <laughs> uh, PG man. Uh, I tried yeah, yeah, to go over. It, yeah. See. I want to say I support both of these movements, even the divestor movement. But I tried to go on their live stream. And can I just compliment you guys? You guys are really chill and calm and laid back. This is why I love black guys. But I tried to go over to the divestor movement and, like, agree with them as well and, like, actually go on their live stream. And, like, they were cutting me off and back and forth. And then, like, when I wasn't agreeing with them, they literally took me off the live stream. And I tried to go back on there. And it's like, it's basically like with black women, I feel like you have to agree with them 24 7 or else if there's like, I also disagree with Cynthia G in her comment section and she blocked me out of her comment section. Like, right. it's, well, well, it's well, weird. Well, let me let me just say this. You guys don't me. block people for disagreeing. Like, I like no, you guys. You no. guys are chill. Black guys are more easier. Right. Um, I, I will admit, you know, this, this is like, you know, a male space, but. 
I don't want to oppose women coming on here. You know, as long as we keep. Yeah, you guys don't hate women, but on the opposite end, I feel like the woman, and and I'm not. This I'm going to get off the topic afterwards because I don't want to make it about black women. But I just feel like with the divestor or the other half of the movement, they're more bitter and evil, more sinister. I I I want to say this. It's either my way or the highway attitude, basically. Right. I love all women. I love black women. I love feminists. I I I love them all. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't care. See, here's the thing. There are guys that will tell you, and, and black men's travel, I, I got to let it out. And putting your channel, um, also Nomadic, if you got a channel as well, so because the chat's asking about your guys' channel, so put it in and I'll put it in, in, in the chat. Um, they want to flag other monger channels, and I'm like, look, Why? Yeah. Oh, okay, if, if, if a guy is telling you, hey, this is the price, this is what you got to do, cool. Um, I'm not going to be I mad the because there's a is... lot of... Oh, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, ma'am. Just one second. A lot of men can be following these sorry-ass dating coaches, paying thousands exactly. of dollars, and spending a lot of money on these women... And they're getting no results mm-hmm. when somebody exactly. can say, look. You're basically like go- catering to the woman, basically. Right. They we, we can say, look, go to this area. This is how much it's going to cost. This is what you do. This is what you not do. This is how you negotiate. But they want to flag their channels. Yeah. Okay? And as a woman, I want to tell you why other women are mad. I'm talking about like any woman who's mad about passport bros. It doesn't even matter about the race. They're mad because mm-hmm. you guys have standards. And it's like they don't like it when men have standards. A lot of these women have standards. If they don't want to date a broke guy, nobody would force them to date a broke guy. But if you guys don't want to date anybody in America, you guys have a choice to go overseas. Like for them to try to stop you to go overseas, it's because they're, they're, they want control. And I feel like us Americans, just to take accountability, I feel like we've gotten so much power, so much control that like even if someone wants to exit out the country and practice their freedom of speech, they can't even like do that without being like like having stuff shut down and taken away from them. Or they they're at least they're trying to do that. It's like I don't right. know. Right. Um so so go ahead, uh nomadic nor I feel like if you guys raise your standards so high, they will have no choice but to change. And that's everybody. If everybody raised their standards high, you know what I mean? Gotcha. Gotcha. Even if gotcha. like and it's not even just gender thing, like even black or even woman in general, if they raise their standards high, guess what? Those trailer trash white men would would do be more successful, and the Pookies and Ray Rays would it would no it would be no. My only issue, Ray Ray's. my only issue with the whole raising your standards high, can you meet your own standards? It's, it doesn't. Well, my thing is, no, 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 it does matter because you can have high standards, but you cannot meet your own standards. But so if someone is delusional, let's go with that. Let's go with that. If someone have high standards and they're delusional, then how about how about keep that person to themselves? In my opinion, right? I say water seeks its own level. Like, you like you if you let them, if you tell these women to not have high standards, then those same delusional women are going to date other people, and they're going to date more pookies and rays and create more babies. And just nope, ha- preach for them to have high standards, and the ones that don't qualify, well, well, guess what? They're going to okay, keep on. They're going to keep hoping. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you this. As far as high standards. Okay, I'm used to dating a certain type of woman. I don't consider that high standards. I don't attract ghetto chicks. I don't attract low lights. I don't attract a exactly. certain type of woman. So, mm-hmm. it's, but I don't call it high standard. It's just because the type of person, that, the type of person I am, I take well, care of myself. You know, I do. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's just like sometimes we got to be yeah. careful on the yeah, wordplay yeah. because again, because again, if you like a lot of women saying high standards, high standards, high standards. But then again, Let can them you have meet high those standards. standards. To me, it's a cold world out here. I feel like it's full of competition. And I think is whoever don't eat just get left out, in my opinion. But at least people will start no, changing. Let me, in my let, me, let me just say something because, real quick. Hold on. Can ahead, I say can I finish ahead, a little ahead. bit? Let me just say go something, ahead. Miss. It just sounds like a whole lot of America right now, like because right. I haven't I haven't heard this type of conversation. Oh, sorry. I can get off the topic. Sorry. And I, I'm just I'm not like I'm not gonna say you go receive. No, nope, you're right. You're hey, absolutely I, w- right. I just want to ask this chick a question. Let's say stay off Americans. I'm sorry. No, I'm just, I'm just saying that, like, when, when people don't have that type of mentality when you go when you go to different countries. Yeah, they do, brother. Hey, hey hold up, hold up. They do. They have they high do. standards. Latinas do have standards. Hey, hold up. Sorry. Wait, 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 guys. I, I'm speaking from experience, and I buck travel could chime in as well. Look, I live My overseas. Is there, there's, 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 there's. There, there's high standards. There's like just like middle class, upper class, lower class, working class. There's high yeah. standards. The thing is, 
we don't they don't focus it on too much. But trust me, if you meet a high a high class chick in Colombia, she ain't fucking with you if you don't got your shit together. It is yeah, what it is. basically. Here's the thing though. Our 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 standards are completely different than their standards because I, can you go into detail yeah, it's, it's, of what's it's, different? It's, I want to know. It's, I want to see. It's, 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 yeah. How was I able to pull a nine in DR? I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you the difference right happen? now. Well, I feel like you can pull a, a nine, nine if you have money. Honestly, if anybody can a, pull nine, a nine, listen, money. look, look, a, a nine is subjective. What you think is a nine to you may not be a nine to me. So that's a subjective. Yeah. Secondly, okay. secondly. Secondly, I think you're an American. Are nice, and I think white women. No, are no, nice. no, 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 they're not. Not all, no, not all Latinas. Let's, let's keep it real. Don't, well, don't put them too much on the pedestal. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. We got the vital message here. What up, bro? It's going. Good to see you. Hello, Hello. welcome. Support. Right. Um, b- before we go back to what we're discussing, what's your thoughts of, and opinions of the situation that we just talked about tonight? I didn't hear the full context of it. I, I heard Kings talking about it the other day a little bit. I don't know the full story, so I can't really give a informed opinion on it. Uh, I wouldn't. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend. Real, 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 real quick, out. Sum- <laughs> right? Real, real quick summary. There was a guy that was married to a woman in the United States. Had a girlfriend in Colombia. All right. He proposed to her found out that she was basically cheating on him through like an investigation went to Colombia and basically removed her try to escape try to go to uh, Montenegro where they don't extradite Americans and got caught that's 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 what happened for the most part oh man that's a (laughs) big mess I'm glad I don't have to deal with that's all I could not really comment on Uh, maybe if he like had a bit more awareness he would have known what was going on with his wife and maybe if he took time to think about it other options i don't know what he was going through at all uh, he wouldn't have right. come to such a terrible decision um to take take lives uh mm-hmm. he probably he potentially had some mental pathology going on uh which doesn't excuse the action but might rationalize it okay. so yeah. I don't know. Um, uh, it sounds like a very unhealthy situation that right. I'm glad I'm, I'm not a part of. Yeah. Right. No. So no. Being, how was that guy able to pull that chick, you know, since they got such high standards? Bro, it's easy. He, he, met, he met her off of Tinder, supposedly, but I will be honest. There are a lot of undercover pros in Medellin, and I'm not saying old girl was a prostitute, but it's very common for them to prostitute themselves to gringos. That's yeah. just the reality. It is common. Mm-hmm. It's really yeah. hard to meet a good-looking woman out here, though. I mean, it's not magic. Mm-hmm. It's just, you know, you just you match or you go up and you talk to them and say hello or what, whatever your line, your opening line is. It's not like. I mean, don't get me wrong. She was gorgeous, but there's a lot of beautiful women out in these in these countries. What I was saying, like a lot of these chicks in those countries, they're so beautiful. There's a lot of beautiful women. They don't know. They don't even know they're that beautiful. But as opposed in America, yeah. a chick like that would probably have like what nine hundred thousand followers. You know, something. So, it's like hey, yeah. Can I can I say something about these countries? Like, notice sure. that a, a lot of these countries, right? There's so many beautiful women. Guess what? Their men are constantly cheating on them. You never really pay yeah, attention to that. Yeah, because they're used to being around that type of beauty. Well, that's the point. Yeah. That's the point. The problem is a lot of gringos they go to these countries. You guys make it so obvious that like they're so gorgeous, they're so beautiful. Like you're so beautiful. They are. Wow, you come to these <laughs> states. But but the thing is, that's the point. If you're accustomed to meeting beautiful women, like for me, I went to University of Miami. I lived oh. in Miami, so I've always been accustomed to being around Latinas and all type of beautiful women. So going overseas, it was like okay, cool. I, you know. You're attractive. Well, everybody the got is, their type. Don't make it obvious. Again, don't make it obvious. Don't make it obvious. When you show it, your what's thirst, man. Making it obvious, that, though? No, like, no, you don't make it obvious. I mean, a woman would I never respect a of... you. A woman would not respect you if you if you if you constantly sweating her. A woman loves the oh, she yeah, loves the fact that hey, like worship. Yeah, everything. again, yeah. look, I'm 45 years old. I've been doing shit for a long time. I'm not in my 20s, so I, I'm speaking like on based on experience. Experience. If you show attention 
too much interest, it, it works against you. So sometimes you got to play. You kind of it's kind of like horse playing a little bit, but at the same time, like don't make it obvious. Like baby, you're the only woman that you're so beautiful. Wow, yeah. wow! And knowing that, dude, you turn the next block. Yeah, it's another weird. attractive girl. Yeah, I mean, like if so, you, know you just got to play it cool. Want to be a sucker to one chick that doesn't even make. I mean, any- everybody's interjecting. Let him finish talking, please. Could you just literally complain about me doing that right. backstage? Okay, just. <laughs> Everyone's gonna, you know, have their turn to talk. Let's respect everyone, but go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I thought we were having like a conversation. A conversation. We all interject if we no, no, get excited good. about this a topic. Thing. You know, no, no the crybaby in the back. All I'm saying to, okay. to the younger guys, listen, man. Don't. I mean, it's good to have an interest in someone, but if she's not represent, if she's not um showing that back to you, don't just be ooh ooh gaga after her, knowing that she's not you know reciprocating it back, and it's just like you know. That's the problem. You have a lot of guys for the first time going to Colombia, first time going to DR, Brazil, Thailand, and they make it. They make their feelings known instantly, which kind of gives the girls the upper hand on you. Yeah, but you got to realize a lot. It is guys, what it is. A lot of these guys probably never even pulled, man. A lot of these guys are not used to chicks giving them attention. They're like, the first time they see some decent chick giving them attention, they're going full simp mode, you know? So that's that's reality right here. Yeah. Being around a beautiful woman, you really can't help it. Like, for an example, white guys, like, let's just say over in British, like, like those women, somebody might find those women extremely gorgeous, but, like, those British men, they produce that beauty, you know? So they're around that 24-7. Yeah. But when you get a guy who's not around beautiful woman, you know, they come from a place where it's not that many beautiful women. They go to another place, like, for an example, Latino, like Mexico, you know, those are very beautiful woman over there and Mexican men it's like oh well we produced that we got the same exact features as those women so like they don't find it special you know what I mean but you get a guy who are not really around that type of beauty you know of course they're gonna act crazy you know what I mean like white guys do the same thing when they go over to these Asian you know places you know what I mean it's, it's just you know hard. everybody got their you know and not it's everybody not used to being around beautiful woman you know what I mean so yeah, it is like I a don't, I don't, I don't think adrenaline. it's I don't think it's the quantity of women out there it's that that they're getting attention from a, the woman like they could be in the states not getting much success yeah and they don't know that they don't have the options to where wait like you need hold on hold on please hold on. Uh, if they're not if they're not getting much success and like they they maybe don't have that sense of knowledge that if you show that she's like everything to the guy she's the most beautiful thing you've seen yeah, if someone told me I was the most beautiful thing they saw, I would I would be like, all right, I, I got all day. I could do whatever I want, and they're still going to be there. Uh, oh, yeah, I've got all the leverage in the world because I'm something spectacular yes. to them. So it's, yes. it's not rocket science. It's just a matter of leverage. You're bringing a large amount of value just inherently. You have a lot more say like when stuff goes down. I agree. Totally agree with that. Right, right. Just... She's cool, but you know it's kind of guys' night. I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's, 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 it's guys' night. It's guys night. Well, I was gonna say I was gonna talk about the standard thing earlier uh, when she was on. I was gonna say that like you you set the the standard isn't high or low. It's a standard that you set. It's like it's what you require, and it kind of depends on what you you are capable of. Like if you kind of if you if you're not capable of something. Uh, how can you really set a standard if you're not right. capable of it? Like you have to, wow. if, I mean, you can't like, afford, if you can't afford something, if my standard is steak every single meal and I'm broke, um, it's either starve <laughs> or eat something else. You know, it's right. so, not that crazy. Oh, hold, oh, no, hold on, by the way, man. I, I, got, I, got a, I got a question for you, Marie. I heard you on Smash TV, which, you know, we're from there. Yeah. like um, bro, I, Hold on, I, hold on, I, hold on. Yeah. So, if you're really out there and DR getting these baddies, like why in the hell are you listening to a guy like Smash TV for? No, I just come on there on Sundays to talk. You know, like I'm I'm cool with everybody, bro. Like I, I don't mm-hmm. give a fuck. Like a lot of times on Sunday after I come back from school or a match, I'd hop on and I just talk. You know, talk into anything about anything. I don't really give a fuck. You know, I don't. I'm not. I don't got like I. Don't, I'm not trying to create any enemies or no shit or no cult shit or up no shit like that. You know, like I talk about, I talk with anyone. I don't give a fuck, bro. really. You know, I, 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 I'm not even scared to say it, bro. Like you could, I'm Zarek, bro. Like 
you know i talk on this i talk in this platform i talk in this platform i don't care bro you know so i don't have bad blood against md and i don't have bad blood blood against you bro so it's, okay. just, that's it all right. all right all right all right and and, and the thing is I, i'm not telling anyone to choose sides you know hey i i show how i move i I talk, I mean what I say, and I back it up by my actions. So that's why I had to go my way. The same thing with the vital message, but we can talk about what's on topic and, you know, what's related to it. So I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah. Hey, MD, bro, hopefully you understand, bro. I I don't got none against none of y'all, bro. So so don't try to, like, create no extra shit, bro. I'm cool with everyone. If if he gives you crap for coming on this show then like you don't you don't owe him anything like you like him you like us uh, it's go go wherever you need to do it wherever you get value is where you should be going mm-hmm. facts 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 yeah. um so go ahead so you you travel to the dr you like it yeah. uh do you do you date women here in the states or you're just yeah I do, I do date here too i date both but i just had like i, I just pull a higher quality in the dr that's all i was saying you know it's just easier to pull over there like you know eight to no. nine it's kind of more like on the regular in the dr as opposed to here it's mostly like sixes and sevens i'm just being real to myself now, now black men's travel dr is like your home bro um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I see you with your dr baddie. Okay, uh, can can guys? Yeah, seven is, years, man. We've been together for seven years, man. Nice, nice, nice. And one day we'll yeah. we'll show the receipts, and it's on his channel. Like he's not capping. <laughs> I, I can vouch for this guy. Um, so can guys really have success in the, in the dr? Does looks matter? Um, okay, um, they could have success, uh, looks matter, but also money matters. Yeah, you got to put matter. yourself in a position where status is important. I mean, in, in DR, you can, you can have a big ass gut, but you better have that money to back it up, it is what it is, man. Um, like honestly, Dominicans are kind of more, they, they kind of Americanized somewhat. Um, you just got to come correct, man. But I think also have this abundance mindset, like, hey, like. She should know, like, hey, if she fucks up, you can move on to the next best thing, right. because you because you put yourself in that position. Um, but the thing is, a lot of guys, what they do, they make the girl, you know, his world, and this is like, you know, baby, I can't be nothing without you type bullshit. And that's why a lot of guys get played in DR, especially in DR. A lot of American dudes get played by by these Dominicans. Yeah, that's what it is. Up is down here. That's 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 real. You know, a lot even they know. <laughs> And, and, and that's the thing. One thing, guys. One thing. Keep in mind, like sex with most women from foreign countries, from Europe to Latin America, sex is sex. It's nothing to them. They don't put any value towards it. But you know, in, in the states, they put value towards it because you know it's looked down upon it just to meet someone to have sex. For them, they could fuck you and not think nothing less. So just because you get ass on the first date doesn't mean anything. So um, just always keep that in mind. It's just like, hey, the true signals are there. But question, can you keep it long term? Because if you're not measuring up, trust me, there's another dude in line that could take a place that could, that could take your place. Right now, now I want to say this because you know we're kind of similar. Where you know I've been dating my main, what going on two and a half years. You've been dating your girl in the DR. Um, obviously, we don't live there, um, but how do you? How can I say this? Um, how do you not be jealous like this guy here, knowing that yeah. she's an attractive woman, mm-hmm. and you know, hey, other guys could still holler at her you, you, while you're not there. Okay, um, one thing, I was married before. I'm divorced. Uh, I was married for ten years, and you know, things didn't work out. And I've come to the conclusion, man. No matter what, like the person I was back then, I always try to control every situation. Like I'm a control freak when it comes to my career, just things around me. And I realized that you can't control everything. If someone's going to go out and do something, you know, behind your back, they're going to do it. So I just kind of picked up like a really emotional and mental mindset. Like, hey, listen, if you fuck up and I find out, you're done. Yeah. And, um, I, mean, and I, I, I don't know. This, I think this comes with, with maturity as well. Um, I'm just at a point in my life now where I have a very abundance mindset. It's like, hey, I know it was out there. You know, I was in Thailand. You know, you saw myself in Thailand, Ecuador. 
like, yo, right. I could I could find another baddie. And she knows that. She knows that. It's like, yeah, I could I could find another one. But the, the thing is, the only reason I'm with you is because we got history and we get along well. But right. I could get another uh, baddie, even here in Miami. Right. I'm, I'm hearing something like a movie or something. Is that me? I'm driving, so I don't know if that's probably it. Um, I mean, it sounds like an intro to a movie. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't hear anything. I, I, okay, I, I think it's me. Okay, yeah, it was me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you have that other tab open? Where <laughs> yeah, you're watching yeah, the, yeah, yeah. You had the yeah. hub open yeah, on another just, tab. Right. Yeah, let me just address this comment. Woody, I don't have any enemies, bro. As I said, I'm 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 not stuck to one platform. I could go anywhere I want, bro. You know hey, look, man, you're chill, man. Don't, don't let the, uh -huh. the yeah, chat's yeah, gonna yeah. egg you on. You know, you're you're fine. Right, right. right. Hey QB, can, can I add and uh, chime in one more thing? I think with long distance relationship, I do better with long distance. I'm a type of person I I, I value my space and I yes. value my alone time. So yeah. I kind of like the long distance because I always done well because I like looking forward to seeing somebody. I don't think I can handle seeing someone every single day. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just at a point now where it's like, I want to, I want like, I want to look forward to seeing you. I want to look right. forward to like being with you. Like if I see you every single day waking up, I don't know. That'll probably kill. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's just, I kind of like the long distance thing. I think long distance works better for me. Right. Well, well, here's my, my thoughts really quick. Um, one thing, I, I know what it takes to be in a committed relationship in terms of a lot of time, effort, and commitment. And I think that would only work if I was there in Mexico full time. Um, I wanted to still kind of explore my options and determine like, okay, this girl is the one. Or, hey, I found something better. But if she was to find something better, I wouldn't even be mad, bro. I'm keeping it big oh. back. QB, I told, you know? I, I, I told her the same thing. I told her the same thing. I told her, hey, listen, you want to find somebody better, even though we've been together for seven years. Again, I've been married. Two kids already. Um, if you were to find something better, I would totally understand. It is what it is, man. Right. I, I value peace and freedom. So Yes. Same here. <laughs> yeah. Same here. And guys, I mean, if you guys haven't been married yet or have kids yet, as you get older, you're gonna value what's important. Your the most important thing is your freedom and your peace. If a woman can't bring none of that, man, and she's bringing nothing but chaos, yo, let her go, man. Let her go. Yeah, that's that's facts. Oh, I liked out. Oh, that's big oh, facts. Oh, oh, yeah, we'll see if he comes back. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? You know, we're, yeah, we're I was saying like. Day. Yo, mm -hmm. so you know how a lot of guys they say they're going overseas for like a better day in life, but are they truly doing that? Because a lot of guys can't afford to live overseas. So what the fuck are they gonna do? Just travel back and forth? That costs a lot of money after a while, you know. So what, well, what, well, let me let me let let me answer that. Yes and no. It all depends on where you live. <laughs> That's for one. So prime example, I I live in California. Um, going back and forth to Mexico is doable, okay? Uh, where I can walk across the border. But let's just say you live in Montana and you're going, you have a girlfriend in Argentina. That That's not yeah, doable. That, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Um, and again, I stress to guys, have options. You know, have have multiple girls that you're kind of dealing with don't just have one because again, out of sight, out of mind. But mm -hmm. if you move there permanently, then your options will be a lot better. And then you can have more of a serious committed relationship, but just going back and forth mm -hmm. um, and being committed to one girl, I, I wouldn't advise guys to really do that. Yeah. That's, that's how that guy killed that girl. Cause he was, mm -hmm. you know, well, no, he was married. That's just the thing. He he had another girl. He was married. But I will say that you can, um, if you can get like a remote job and, yeah. you, can, you know, be location independent from your job and make American dollars and spend pesos or whatever, like that, I think that's a pretty good situation to be in because yeah. then you can, you know, have your job in the States, but you can just be, 
out there wherever you want to be. You know what I mean? So to me, that seems like the, for me, that's the best situation for me personally. Yeah. Only one thing I have with the passport bros thing is that like when I was on the plane, bro, there was like a lot of fat out of shape American dudes. I'm, I'm not sure what <laughs> they about American women. It piss a lot of dudes off. Yeah. Well, go ahead. Yeah, this is a lot of fat, <laughs> out of shape, nasty looking dudes, like, you know, talking shit about women in the States, right. but they're, they themselves are fucked up. So I'm, I'm wondering what, what are they complaining about? You know? Yeah. You know? Let me, oh. let me, let me, let me answer that. Um, you have a lot of bitter passport bro guys and they, it starts with themselves mentally because to me, if you're a guy that's bitter, and you're overshaped, and you're hoping to get better results with a woman overseas, it's not going to happen, and you're going to be limited to just paying for women. And and for some guys, they, they know that, and they're cool with it. Mm-hmm. But, again, you want to make sure to where you're mentally and physically at a better state of mind because your health is at risk long term. And you don't want to be a guy where you finally move out the country, but now you have to go to the hospital three or four times out the week to get your meds and you're having breathing problems because you're not exercising enough. So, yeah, yeah, I that's my thoughts on those type of dudes. I mean, I hear you on the health tip. It's always good to be healthy. You want to be the best version of you that you can be. Yeah. But I mean, in my experience, there's a few ways to get women. There's either you're like really good looking, you're really charming, or you got money. Right. So, right. You know what I mean? Like you don't got to be in the best shape if you got if you got money, or you don't need to be a rich guy if you know if you're like charming. You know, so I mean, you just got to find what you're good at and just you know yeah. excel at that. No, no matter. Yeah, just one 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 thing I want to say to him, and then you can go uh, blackness travel. Are you dating the women in Mexico City? W- would you feel? Would you say that if you were in the states, you would have the same success and, and the quality of type of girls? Or hell's no, oh, okay. hell's no. Uh, so that's facts right there. That's hell's. Facts. I, I, that's all I, I wanted to know. Because yeah. like sometimes I feel like I'm in a dream. Because it's a culture thing. We have a lot of simp men in America, so these chicks' heads are kind of boosted up. Yeah, and I'm not. It's not like I'm like a. I'm not a, like a bad looking guy. I'm not like a stud or anything like that. But I'm not a bad looking guy. I know I can get women and stuff like that. But the chicks here is just like it's ridiculous. Like I'm, sometimes I'm like, come on, is this really my life right now? Like, <laughs> right, right. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, black men's travel. You know what? I, actually, I have a question for the guys on the panel. Um, well, granted, because I'm older, so things were a lot different 20 years ago and during the 90s when I went to college. Um, how are today women are in the dating scene now, like in your age group, in the 20s? Uh, I'm just curious because I don't know how the dating scene is for you guys versus when I was in my 20s. Like in my 20s, I had an amazing time. I had a great time in Miami going to school and dating and meeting, you know, spring spring break, summer, summertime. So I had a great time. So what's the difference between my experience versus yours? Like, how different are the women are now versus the women that, that I experienced back in my twenties? I mean, it's relative to your SMV. If you're a tall, good looking guy, you'll you'll still have a great time. But for the average guy, it's probably a little bit more harder because of the online dating. But he could still win if he if he knows what he's doing, but it's just a little bit more harder. That's what I gotta say. So you're relative so, to your SMV. So what do the women look for now? Today's women, like in your age group. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, Black Miss Trouble. I want everyone to answer that on the panel. So, okay. vital message, you go ahead. You go next. All right. So, can you repeat the question for me, BMT? Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to know, again, because I'm 45. So, when, during my 20s, during the 90s, I had a great time. I, di- I didn't have the issue that a lot of you guys are talking about. Um, so, what is the difference between the women back back then to the women now? Like, what's the difference? Because I had a great time. I didn't have any issues with women dating and anything else. So I'm just curious, like, what makes the women so different now, or more difficult, and having more mating situations, mating and dating between you guys? Um, I, I don't think they're that different, like, in terms of, like, inherently different. I think the main big difference is that we 
you're constantly or the competition that you brought up early you're in competition you're actively competing against more men at the same time yeah so like instead of everyone in that room you have everyone in within like a 20 mile radius yeah at a time so it's not like before where like if you're the best guy in the room you got pretty good shot it's if you're the you got to be like the best option available in a larger area uh whatever is like kind of it has to have a convenience component on top of uh so she's picking out of uh she has more of an abundance of dudes to pick between got it. than okay before i think that's the main key difference so it, and and then add on the the um the financial side of it i think that's getting less and less important because you have a lot of women that are working towards uh, a career and then uh so like if they're if they make their own money well like what why are they seeking money or if they are seeking money they want a guy who has more so it's it's kind of it, the competition is a lot stiffer because there's more competitors at a time nice buck okay. travel what's your thoughts Are, are you still there, Bug Travel? He sleep. He dropped off. Okay. Um, I'm Murray, gonna... we'll go with you. All right, I would say like it's it's relative to the guy's SMV. Like, I mean, for the for the average guy, it's a little bit more harder because you know Gen Z are more on the old online shit, so he's gonna have to try harder. That's all I gotta say. Like, the competition is just like more stiff relative to back in your days because a lot of chicks now they know their value so you know it's they kind of have a little bit more higher standards but i say it's relative to your smv if you're a decent looking guy you know you could still have fun but it's you're gonna have more fun like probably somewhere like overseas where you would probably be able to pull like a higher quality you could still do well here but it's gonna take more effort so that's that's my that's my um i'll tell you this i'm part of generation x no. I'm, born, I'm born in 1978 mm -hmm. and i think during that time during the 90s uh even early 2000s we were forced to approach a woman that was yeah. the only way you could meet meet a woman there wasn't no social media no mm -hmm. texting i mean i didn't have my first cell phone until like my junior year in college mm -hmm. um so like for us we had a cold approach so you saw a chick man it's just like you know what hey i'm gonna shoot my shot <laughs> and that's what it was and then by doing that so often you just stop caring. You, you look at it as a number thing. And they get to the point where, like, now, like, if I see someone at the bar, I, I have no issues going up to her, like, hey, how you doing? And just spark a conversation. You know, find something interesting about her, what she's wearing, an earring, whatever, something that stands right. out and compliment her. So, for me, I could I could be domestic or overseas. I'm a pull because I'm more I'm more the aggressor. Right. Now, yeah. now so, I, I want to ask you this question really quick, uh, Black Men's Travel. Do you approach every girl at the bar that you like? No. Or okay. No, no. I'm I'm I, I, I kind of find the one that kind of just stands out. And again, I, I kind of like the nerdy, sexy type. So yeah. I don't like the one that look trashy. I, I stay away from those <laughs> heavy makeup. I stay away from. I like Smart. the nerdy, sexy type. Like like she's sexy, but she doesn't even know it. And mm. it's just like that's what I like. I like the quiet type. So. And again, I try to find something interesting. Like I'll look at the earrings, elbows, like something different, and just oh, like, oh, okay. I mean, that's whatever, man. Like elbows. whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you really hey. put lotion on those elbows? Hey, you there. Mean, hey, like, hey, man, you got some nice lotion elbows. You <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> Watch your pull, man. Watch your pull. I mean, the thing is, I, I try to find something interesting that's going to stand out. And again, from the, from there, when she gives me a response that I like. All right, cool. I got her. I can just continue to talk to her. Granted, I have this thing where I'm, I'm not pressed to get a number. If I feel like hey, things are going well and I ask for a number, cool. If I don't, I walk away. It's not a problem. Like, hey, you know what? Thanks for the conversation and keep it moving. And it's something that I do now. And um, yeah, I have no expectations, man. It's just more like, hey, I just want to get to know you. We have a good time, whatever. If this, you know, does sparks off, then that's great. Right. We we got Ulysses in the back. What's good, bro? What's your what's your thoughts and opinions about uh what I discussed earlier, the American guy removing the the 
the Colombian girl, unfortunately, what's your thoughts and opinions really quick? Well, I mean, I have a lot of, I have a lot of mixed feelings, bro. Cause like, I have a lot of friends in Medellin and like, I, I will say like half the girls I know are posting, like are sharing what happened to that girl. And so that kind of like took me by surprise. I've seen a couple of girls that I, I know and they post it on their social media, where it's Instagram or Facebook or even their WhatsApp. So I'm seeing that, you know, the message has got across and like, I'm starting to think like it's going to have a negative backlash for all of us. Um, I'm starting to think like, don't quote me on this. I could be wrong, but I'm starting to think that there's a, a population of the, of the country that really don't want us there anymore. Like we're kind of getting like scapegoated <laughs> for what's going on. Like their issues, like with prostitution and drugs and, you know, stuff like that. I think we're getting the blame for it and saying that we're the problem, but that's been going on for decades. Like I've talked about it on my channel before that, that shit that Pablo Escobar left in those bodies, especially in Medellin, is still there, and it has nothing to do with the foreigners. But unfortunately, we're gonna get scapegoated. We're gonna we're gonna get blamed for it. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. I feel like I feel like I people, don't, people don't want. I mean, here I'm in Mexico, so everybody we're fucking gringos, right? But people don't want gringos around. Like, you know, we we I, I'm not talking about anybody on the panel or myself, but just like Americans in general have a bad reputation of being arrogant and being loud, obnoxious, you know, flashing their money around and that rubs people the wrong way. So I know, I know here in, in Mexico, there's a big problem with gringos, you know, driving the price up in certain neighborhoods, you know, and, and for right. basically gentrification basically, you know, so mm -hmm. we got a reputation all around the world. And it doesn't have to do with always, you know, you know what happened to that young lady gotcha that's yeah that's true but it's they're gonna use it as like fuel for the fire you understand like they're yeah, gonna no, no. they're gonna use stuff like that to like blame us oh look at what happened look at what that guy did mm -hmm. you know no, you're right you're right about that right well you ulysses you you've been in colombia for a very long time uh you've been at several places in colombia overall um would you say you would go back there just to visit for I don't know maybe three or four days, or would you go travel somewhere else? Man, I've, I've been saying it for a while now. Colombia is hot. Like I think I did a video like two weeks ago. Of my friend that's been there for more years than I have, and his neighbors they actually were Mexicans, and they got like a drug, two of them, and he actually had the family of those guys send them a thousand dollars through Western Union. So, and not only that, it was so messed up the situation, but. It's so weird because the robbers came back and they actually dropped their passports off. I guess they didn't want to. They were scared of the guys making a denuncia or something like that. But everybody knows at this point, like, Colombia authorities is a joke. That's why I'm, I'm looking at this case and I'm laughing. I'm really I'm laughing. I hope the guy gets prison time. But I just, everybody, like, even the Colombians themselves will tell you, like, they don't do nothing. And, you know. Or something like that. The other YouTuber said that they caught those two girls that drugged him, and the police didn't do nothing about it. And so that's the way the justice system is in Colombia. Like they really don't do anything. Um, I just think they're just making a, an example out of this guy. Like uh, I, I, I don't know. To me, it's just like I feel like they have the that the Asian American guy that was killed three months ago, and nobody talked about it. None of the Colombians, you know, posted on their social media, nothing like that. They knew about it. And they didn't care. So it's kind of just like I, I'm getting the sense that Colombians at the end of the day really don't care about us. And I yeah. just after like living there and going there for four years, I kind of sense like it's really difficult to meet people there, locals that you can really trust. That's yeah. just my personal opinion. Yeah. So, no, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend going over there for a while, for at least maybe like a year or two years. Let it calm down, because after COVID, uh, everything got really, really worse, especially in Medellin and Cali. Mm -hmm. Hey, you know what? Hey, can I can I say something to the guy that from Medellin? Yeah. That that um, I've been going to Colombia since 2015. I've been to Bogota, Cali, Buenaventura, Barranquilla, Cali, um, shit, Medellin. And uh, you're right. Everything you said is a hundred percent. I I seen the change in Colombia. Like when I was going in 2015, I was probably one of the only few black dudes on the plane going to Medellin. And when you were out there, like I stood out because I spoke English. But now everyone you see in Medellin and Cartagena and, other, and these other cities, they kind of put a bad rap on this whole black man traveling or foreigners traveling out there because they're being too flamboyant. And my question to you, 
Do you think the drugging and the robbery is gonna actually going to increase now since this murder happened? You know what? I have no idea. I just think it's like I think you have to put yourself in the mindset of a criminal. You know, there's no consequences. Why are you gonna stop? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, like these people know that there's no consequences. Like you know, and you have to remember a lot of the guys are sometimes get drugged. Like these two Mexican guys that got drugged, they're leaving the next day, so they don't care. Like that's why they could do it because. Most guys that get drugged, they're there for a few days, and then, that's you know, true. they leave. And sometimes, let's be honest, some guys are buried. They have, you know, they have, they're prestigious people. They don't want this to get out, so they're not going to say nothing. So imagine how many guys are getting drugged that are not saying nothing, and they just take the L, and they go home and shit, you know, so. The first time I heard someone got drugged was 2016. I met these guys in Fort Lauderdale. We were on the same flight to Medellin. And I remember we, we all met at uh, Augusto's and uh, we, we had a couple of shots, whatever, and I left. And I didn't see these guys until three days later. And I was like, yo, what happened? You guys been missing. Yeah, man, we got drugged. We were, hop in a, they were in a hospital for two days. Wow. All three yeah, guys yeah. got drugged. Three all three of them. Three yeah, days, same thing, man. Happened, same thing happened to my friend this year. Like he got, and he's a, he's a vet too. He's been going to Columbia for many years and he lived there for about a year and a half. He got drugged this year at a club, and he actually, he got lucky that he passed out in the club, right? So the girl didn't get to, like, take him home, but, it, like, they still took his wallet or whatever. But he passed out, and he, he was in the ER for, like, three or four days as well. And he's still, yeah. he's still actually in Medellin. He never left. I, I would have left. Fuck that. But I think uh, the locals are getting it just as bad. Like, almost every girl that I know now That's in true. Medellin has been robbed. Every girl. And I, and I said it before, like, I think like a few months ago, the waitress at my friend's bar got shot in the neck for her cell phone. And the next day she was back at work. I would have not been at work for maybe a week, maybe even longer. But to me, it's like the bad thing about it is normal for them. Like when they get robbed, it's like, oh, I got robbed yesterday. Ha ha. And so it's like back to normal. It's like not a big right. deal for them. Even I got a quick question. I, I got a quick question for uh, Nomadic. Do you feel safe in Mexico City? Um, I mean, for the most part, yeah. Like, okay. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of silly to say. I mean, it it is a big city, so you gotta right. obviously watch your back. But I was actually, like I said, I was I was with a Colombian woman woman earlier today, and I said uh, that one of the things I like about Mexico as opposed to Colombia is I don't have to look over my shoulder every five right. seconds. Yeah. I, I got Columbia a looks I weird. Got the S twenty two Ultra. Top of the line. I'm walking around with this shit all day long, waving it around, and I don't feel like anybody's gonna take it from me. And uh, so I feel very, I feel very safe here. And, you know, I, I've lived in New York for for the last ten years. I lived in Brooklyn, so it, like I'm, I've been, I've been robbed before. I've been uh, jumped before. I've been beat up before in the states. Yep. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But not, but here in Mexico, nah, it's it's pretty good for the most part. Yeah, so I just want to ask this question. Why does um, Mexico get such a bad rep in America, but a lot of gringers are getting fucked up in, like, Colombia and getting drugged and robbed? And we, we barely hear that. Oh, I, I can answer that. Yeah. Um, Politics. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, one reason um, the cartels, and by the way, the cartels, they operate – a lot of businesses in Mexico. They run this show. Right. They run this show. Yeah. Um, and cartels know that American are cash cows, so they fight amongst each other. They don't fight with Americans, okay, because they own the hotels. Mm -hmm. They own um, a lot of strip clubs, bars, restaurants. But unfortunately, they want to say that, hey, Mexico is very dangerous don't go there. And a lot of the propaganda is for people to travel, you know, within the states. Like, go to Orlando instead of going to Cancun. Go <laughs> go off in Phoenix, Arizona, then in Cabo. So yeah. Mexico is competition because a lot of things are cheap. Liquor is cheap. You know, pay for play is reasonable. Accommodations are very reasonable. All mm -hmm. the packages. So that's why, that's part of the reason why um, they want to say that Mexico is very dangerous. And I've been to Culiacan, Sinaloa, like over seven times. I felt more safer there than 
somewhere in East LA or East Oakland or anywhere in California. I'm keeping the big facts. I will say this though, it, uh, Sinaloa was just a war zone about two weeks ago. Right. Because they uh, they women, by the way. What's that? I said beautiful women, by the way. In yeah, they, they arrested. Uh, I, I don't. They they arrested somebody's son, and they 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 brought him into the. They they tried. They were shooting down planes, and it, it was crazy. It was, but yeah, that's I don't, crazy. yeah it might have calmed down, but it, it it was a war zone about two weeks ago. So, right. Uh, yeah. We got Baja tours really quick, bro. What's your thoughts and opinions of, of the situation related to the stream that I discussed earlier? Oh, I've seen this. It's ha it's happening in Colombia now. It, it, it's happening in in uh, Tijuana a few times. Remember uh, a couple oh, years back? I totally, I should have brought that up, man. Yeah. yeah. And then Go ahead this. and tell the story really quick. Go ahead and tell the story. Yeah, well, basically this this uh, ex-college basketball player, uh, he, had, he ended up in a relationship with a chick um, who ended up being a working girl. So I guess she lied to him and said she stopped working. So he uh, he followed her one day and then he found out that she's actually still working and working in Adelita's bar in the red light district of Tijuana. And so uh, he snapped into a rage. This was back in uh, during COVID when the clubs, the actual strip clubs were closed, but they had speakeasies, meaning there was hidden strip clubs within the hotels that are ran by the strip clubs. So Basically, he waits for her to uh, to get done with a customer, and then he slits her throat. Yes. yes. And more currently, there's a there's a guy that uh, for a couple of months, for several months, he went around killing bar girls in the red light district. And then um, where he made a mistake is he tried to pawn one of the girls' cell phones, and so. Mexico's authorities, they traced it, they 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 traced the uh cell phone number, they called it, and somebody at the pawn shop picked it up. So now uh Baja California's uh authorities they contacted US authorities. So now if that guy gets stopped by the cops in the United States, he's screwed, he's gonna get extradited to Mexico. Oh wow, wow. Yeah, he wow. killed like three bar girls. Uh, I think two of them were from Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. So yeah, guys going down there doing this crazy stuff. They're they're not gonna get away with it. They they're either gonna get caught really quick, or they're gonna get caught sooner or later. Right now, what's um, what's your thoughts about? The long distance relationships should guys do it, not do it, or just be self aware? Um, because be a, a lot of passport bros, they don't really talk about this, but I'm happy to talk about this. I'd say be self-aware. Know, know, know that you're not the only one in the market, especially in those type of countries where yeah. things like sex is far less taboo. Mm -hmm. it, it is like in the United States where yeah. even, even in the United States it happened, but sex is far more taboo. Right. Yes. I, 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 I totally agree with this with gentleman. Sex is so taboo here in the States versus other countries from Asia to Europe to Latin America. Sex is just sex. It is what it is. They can fuck you and go to you know and have no feelings towards you, but you you may end up catching feelings. And that's what the problem always happens. Yeah. Cause women use sex as like a like an upper hand here. So. Right. Right. Totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Do you mind if I go back to the Colombia topic with the yes. po the politics yes. component of it? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, about the locals not liking. Like I don't. I've never been to Colombia. I don't know, but I think what it boils down to, from what I'm hearing, does Colombia still want American tourists' dollars? Is what it really comes down to. Ooh. Like we, we know that there's a lot of political stuff going on there. The sentiment, uh, they might have to run some PR to where 
uh, if they if they still want the tourist dollars, they're going to have to work on that public perception so Americans feel safe enough to go there. They already well, probably work on the back end. They probably lobby our government to not consider legalizing prostitution here so that more people travel there. It wouldn't surprise me if they did that. It wouldn't surprise well, me if other countries do that too. Like, do they really, it depends, do they really want the tax dollars? And if people don't feel safe, they won't come. Right. Well, I think they need to well, also, well, well, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, Black. Well, well, yeah, well, the thing is, Columbia doesn't rely on tourism. It's not like Dominican and Republic. The, the Dominican Republic yeah. relies on I'm not on saying tourism. they have to rely on it. I'm not saying they have to um, rely on it. It's whether they Cartagena, want it or not. Well, Cartagena is the is, Cartagena is the huge, huge tourist hub. Trust me, no one's not no no one's not touching Cartagena. Medellin is not a tourist hub. So for them, the tourists decide not to go to, to Medellin but go to Cartagena, the country wins. So yeah, I mean, then, then, then yeah, then you're not wanted there. It's they don't want that. Yeah, you know, I mean, honestly, money. they don't care. They don't care to have you because they're gonna have tourists from Europe, from other countries. So if Americans decide, hey, we're gonna protest Colombia, trust me, they're not gonna care. Because back then, yeah, I, I was as, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not arguing against you. I'm just asking, do they want those dollars going into Medellin or not? You're saying they don't, so that's fine. They're gonna get it regardless because guys gonna go. I think guys, right now, I think. Well, I, Yes, I think guys are go even if like, yes, yes, they are. Trust me. Even time? now, there's there's tons yeah. of guys on these planes going to Medellin, right. going to straight to Pacajeras where all the druggings occur, Pacajeras, and get drugs. Trust me, that's not gonna yeah, stop. There's a lot of thirsty dudes. I guess it's on, guess it's on them, There's a lot right? of thirsty dudes out there that just yep. e just eagerly get some pussy so they wouldn't risk their lives for it. I'll say this hey, too. peace leave, but go ahead. Go I'll ahead. say this too because like, I mean, I'm sort of in the digital nomad um, realm, and it's a big digital nomad hub. People from all over the world go to Medellin to to work there, to work remotely. So I know a bunch of people who are going from Mexico City to Medellin as we speak uh, in the next couple of weeks. So I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Yeah. yeah. It's a big city. It's a big. It's a big city. It's like New York. You know, it's a, yeah. it's a big city. You have people from all over the world. You know, so you yeah. would have to see. Yeah. Uh, you would have to push. The U.S. would have to push uh, for for uh, Colombia to ban uh, scopolamine. Yeah, they, they can't do that. Like, yeah, like, they're like, not going to do that because they make money off of the scopolamine. <laughs> Doesn't it just grow naturally there? It's all, yeah, all the it's flowers the there. Yeah, plant. you can't yeah. try to regulate that. They would work. have to kill, chop down every tree that that stuff yeah. grows on. Yeah, it's that's not, not work. Yeah, and we might, we, and like the U.S., we might, we might buy a lot of that from them too. Just like it, scopolamine is a good uh, drug for motion sickness. I'm I mean, like, the only way we can prevent this is like. Um, educating guys on the on the best way to protect themselves because a lot of guys, there must be a way to protect themselves from all this bullshit, man. You know, from getting yes, drunk. Oh, it's it's yeah, good that you're sharing are... this because like you, it there there's a sentiment that you're unwelcome. Like it, a guy might want to choose a different location. Like, that's a big that's a big factor on the list. But the thing is, you gotta you gotta keep your head on a swivel and you gotta know the. the well, that's everywhere. Numbers. Well, you got yeah, you got to know the do's and don'ts. Like as far as the skipolamine thing and not getting drugged, never, never accept a, a drink from uh, a chica. Don't leave your drink anywhere unattended. Yeah. Right, that, that's right. basic things. Uh, uh, that's yeah, a basic. That's, I, I would say that's rule the right. United States. I, I, as well. I, I, hold, hold on, I just got a quick announcement. Um, I apply for monetization with YouTube, so cross your fingers. Hopefully, I get some super chats. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Good luck. You know, so while you guys were talking, I I just completed it. You know, on my phone and stuff. There you go. So, yeah. There you go. But, but but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go so, for it, man. So yeah, you just got to keep your head on the swivel and and know the do's and don'ts as far as it. Yeah, it happens in the U.S. too. But I guess people in the U.S. get so comfortable that they they don't even they don't even bother looking out for that type of thing. And when you go to Colombia, where this type of this type of stuff grows on trees, and everybody and their mama can get their hands on it easily, 
uh, yeah, that cha- right. that changes the dynamic a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, really but quick, it's it's less of it's less of the worst thing that could happen to you. It's more about part of going to a place where you're not welcome. Is yes. probably the bigger component of it. Like right. if if people are going like, oh, if that if something horrible happens to that guy, I don't care. That's not a place I would want to go to anyway. Yeah. Like, like why right. will there ever be a shift where guys stop going? It sounds like you guys are saying no. Right. For all let, me, let, let, let me give you my reason really quick. Columbia has been promoted by guys like David Bond uh, and a lot of travel bros, beautiful women. Hey, you can come here, be with these beautiful women. So as long as that keeps going on, Uh guys, no matter, no matter all the, the unfortunate situations that can happen, guys will continue to go there because that's being promoted. That's what they see on Instagram. That's what they see on other YouTube channels. Other other content creators are saying, "Yeah, go here, go here." You know, beautiful women, and of course, they're taking the beautiful women as more of a reason reasoning to actually travel and go visit Colombia, and not understanding the safety mechanisms that you need to be in a town like that. Yeah, hey, but not lie, though. a lot of Colombian chicks look like the Kardashian look. What a lot of dudes like. I just saw a vid on YouTube where a cardigan of vid had like 50 million views. I'm like, what the fuck? So, you know, a lot of men, bro, like they really want to, they really want to try, bro, you know? So I'm not sure. I I, I get it. And I I just, one thing and, you know, (laughs) black men's travel, you know, I'm right, bro. A lot of these girls that you see on these videos are undercover pros and I'm not trying to sound bitter or hate on these guys, but they are, they're, they're bar girls. You go to like a place like delirium. Yes. They're, you see the, be, women. yes, be, they're, they're all pros. They're all, of, all of them, all of them. I seen them, all of them. <laughs> Got the animated name. If a guy, if a guy uh, is, is spotlighting a chick, she's a pro. Uh, <laughs> yep. I rest my case. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, they're dying over pros. Right, right. Um, yeah, I just feel like I feel like people have to have that mentality, like not assuming the worst, but just like don't always assume the best. Just because she's like seems beautiful and sweet, don't just take that at face value. Know that that you're in a third world country. Know that. Uh, the average salary is like three or four thousand dollars a year, right? right. So like no survival these, modes kicking in. Like know these things and know that like you, when you when you're a gringo going to these country, you're you're like at an economic advantage, right? And if you were if you were on the other if the if the shoe was on the other foot, and you saw some somebody coming in who makes thirty times more than what you make a year, what would you do to get that money, right? So like, great just, point. Great point. A lot of the Colombian chicks yeah. are doing it the wrong way, though. They should just like make these dudes become simps and just go to Western Union instead of just like drugging them, you know? <laughs> right. Well, well, one thing I do want to say, um, there are Colombian girls that are playing the wrong way. So when I had Facebook a few years ago, which I need to get my Facebook account updated, but anyways, I would notice that. A lot of these Colombian girls would be Facebook friends with multiple travel dudes and be black men's travel. You know what I'm talking about. Yep. So, <laughs> right. So you would be mutual friends with this girl and she's mutual friends with another content creator or whatever. But at the same time, she's hitting up all these dudes for money. All of them. <laughs> and all she got to do is just flash or send you something. Whoops. You know, X rated. All right, Poppy, I miss you. Please help me. And dudes are breaking her off every single month. Hola, right. guapo. The Dominican <laughs> chicks was on that heavy. Right. <laughs> and so it's like, look, do do you for you know for myself? Because I I'll, I'll be honest. There are certain places where I don't want to go because I don't want the riffraff, all right? Mm-hmm. And I don't mind telling the places where I go. Ecuador is one of them. 
I didn't have to worry, you know, <laughs> and Black Miss Trouble, you're going to laugh, but I didn't have to worry about Pookie, Ray Ray, Tyrone blowing up the spot in Ecuador because I moved different from them. All right. They're welcome there. They're welcome anywhere. They're welcome to Max. I don't care. They're not my issue. My issue is, okay, it's a nightclub. It's a musical kid. Are there enough women there? All right. Um, it's the area safe. That's it. But when they experience something, they don't get out of that world. So no matter how dangerous Colombia may be or Medellin, they're still going there. They're still getting that Spirit Airline ticket for a 120 round trip. <laughs> Leaving out of Miami for Lauderdale or Atlanta and and you know they're making it rain on $30 uh pros out there. That's what they do. Bless them. That's what I say, but yeah. <laughs> I'm finished. Your your guys' thoughts. Yeah. I think a reason why people will keep going to Mexico, Central America, South America, it's easy. Like you said, the Spirit Flight, 120 bucks round trip. Uh, if you work remotely, Colombia is on the same time zone as New York. You know, uh, sure, I want to go to Thailand, I want to go to the Philippines, but that's like on the other side of the world. It's right. Uh, 23 hour, 23 hour a time zone. Trip. A job. You know, uh, <laughs> the alien culture, at least I know Latinas. They have Latinas in New York. So, like, it's the same hemisphere, you know? It's the Western Hemisphere. It's just easy. Right. Easier right. in Thailand, you know? So. Right. Plus, and they speak more English. Speak right. English, you know? Right. And, and and when you go to Guadalajara, how long are you going to be there again? Uh, I was planning on being there for a month, but I might stay there a little bit longer, or I might – Go to uh, Baja, California, sir, after that. Hey, how are okay. you six out there? How are you um, uh, Nomadic, nomadic. How are you pulling the chicks in Mexico? Where do you Tinder. get mostly? Tinder. Tinder and Bumble. Okay. Easy. Mm -hmm. Easy. Right. Easy right. peasy, bro. Yeah, he, he's been making it work there, you know, having no problem. I mean, here, here's my shit. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. Shorty, you know, there another one with a number that I had to blur out. Like, hey, yeah, uh, get a nice profile, take <laughs> professional pictures, and you're lit. You know, all these guys saying, "Oh, I go out there and I, I, I mean, I hear some bogus stories." Just, I met this girl at the beach, and it's like, "Oh, she a pro? Don't cap to me." I know. You know, the only pictures are in hotel lobbies and <laughs> <in> the bedroom. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't really, I mean, for me, I'm not like super lover guy, but I mean, like, right. I, I smashed like four chips last week and, you know, just like ridiculous. But it's just like, you know, just regular stuff. Just make a Tinder profile, you know, get some matches and talk to them. And, and like, I mean... You got the whole black thing working for me, really. Honestly, there's not a lot of black people here in Mexico. And in, like wow. when you when you're a black guy, they like they're they they just lose their mind. They like they like they love everything about it. Like I love yeah. your skin. I love the way you talk. I love like every like everything. They just they yeah. fucking love it. So yeah, man, I gotta take a trip there, man. Like that's crazy. I, I mean, like. For some reason, like the bad, the bad, the bad, like reputation Mexico has, but like I never, I never traveled there, but like I'm be becoming like more open minded now. Mexico is, especially Mexico City. I don't, I like, I went, I, I spent a little time in Cancun and Playa del Carmen, is uh, whatever, but Mexico City is, it's a modern city. You know, Ubers, you can Uber anywhere for like three, four dollars. You got to be out there. Is like, the Airbnb out there cheap? Like the, yes, yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I I have a certain level of luxury lifestyle that I am accustomed to. So like my my Airbnbs are like a thousand to like thirteen hundred a month. A month. Uh, that's not bad. It's not but bad at all. In a really nice area, though. A very nice area. Very yeah. very very hot. Like like 
the highest high like the highest high class area in in a, in a major city. Right. Like, it's, Big it's difference. Yeah, it's legit. It's legit. Damn, I might have to send a spend a month or two out there, man, before I go off to med school. It's crazy. I would rec- I would recommend it for sure. And like I said, um, there's a whole like digital nomad movement going on. Here, it's actually become a little bit of a problem because gringos are driving up the price for ha- housing for locals, mm-hmm. but it is what it is. Uh, so there, there's a lot of um, expats, digital nomads, uh, people from Europe and, and America here in Mexico City, especially in those two neighborhoods, Condesa and Roma Norte. Um, right. Really quick, we, we got Woody. Woody here. What's up, bro? What's your thoughts of opinions? Bro? About uh, the American guy removing the Colombian girl, DJ. What's your thoughts and opinions? Uh, it's bad publicity, uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, it doesn't get too wild up because it just depends how how the media want to treat this. <clears throat> but other than that, I mean, just everybody just keep doing whatever you know they're doing. It's it's uh, you know, it is what it is. You know, so I don't I don't. It could be a big deal. It's not you know. But it's not gonna stop any traveling, you know. They can't just stop. Oh, oh, this guy's a tra- is a passport, bro. You mm-hmm. know, you're banned from this country. You know, it's not it's not gonna be nothing like that. Right. Really don't care, Nick. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't got issue with no one. Thank you, bro. Thank bro, you. Bro, <laughs> bro, chill. I was kidding in the chat too. I, you know, it's uh, there's more there's more like a safe zone. You know, it doesn't matter if you're I, on I different know, but, streams. But, but, you know. But, but, but you know, Woody, I, I will be honest. He promotes that. I don't. I don't. You know, and unfortunately, you were mutual with a lot of us, and he cut you off. And, and, I mean, it's just it yeah. is what it is. No, it, it, it's it's fine, QB. I mean, look, I never because since since the beginning, you know, I know what you were about. You were honest. You talked about your backstory. So I never, I honestly never, you know, said anything even bad about you because. I was like, okay, this is this is good, you know. Black Pill was talking about this for a while, and you're living the life. So I never said anything bad about you. I think I think you were always cool. And hey, if they want to do, you know, whatever they want to do all together, it's 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 right. up to them. But right. I think I think right. you're straight, you know. Really quick, I hope uh, Black Pill Medicine because they, and I don't mean to get off the subject, but just for like five minutes, and then we'll we'll get back and we're gonna wrap it up. You know what I mean? Um. They, they really pick on that guy, and he's admitted that he's in an open relationship, and it's working. I'm like, bro, they're not helping you over there. You don't need those dudes, okay? And for certain guys that are in open relationships, like, I know I couldn't do that with my significant other, but it's a black pill reality. Like, hey, um, instead of going through prostitutes or those type of women, if my woman wants to be with other dudes and I accept it. I'm accepting it because I know that, Hey, I'm not going to be able to get a girl like her. And I can tell you one thing. There are a lot of cucks in Mexico. A lot. I don't know if you experienced that, uh, nomadic, but bro, a lot big of time, dog. A lot of what? Cucks. So basically <laughs> like girls, like, like, uh, wives and girlfriends where, um, their partner, well, the guy, they they let their girlfriend or their wife be be with other men. Uh, yeah. oh, oh, okay. It's a huge okay. swinger yeah. scene. Uh, in yeah, Mexico. Actually, actually, huge. Funny story. Funny story. Yeah, go ahead, tell it, tell it. <laughs> like my, I've been, I've been on the scene for years, so yeah, <laughs> right. Not, but, 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 but let them tell it. Let, let them tell a story really quick. It's just, it's just a quick story. Like my second week here, I met I met this uh woman on Tinder. And we was talking and she was like, hey, do you want to go to a party? And I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. And then she was like, oh, it's a sex party. And I was like, what? And she, <laughs> she was like, yeah, you know, me and my partner are throwing this uh, party for a bunch of people. And all that. I was like, and I, I, I said I was going to go. And then like the night of it, I was like, nah, I'm not going to that shit. Bro. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have, your mind would have been blown, man. Uh, you know, your so, mind would have got blown. Uh, Latino wives would have. Right. Big facts. Big you facts. Go ahead. Right. What, what, what do you you you, you got something? Got you were about to say. I got something? I got a question. So yeah. at the at the swinger scenes, uh, you know, in these foreign countries and even in U.S. Uh, 
so is is it a, is it like straight raw dogging or or what's yeah. the procedure you like do you walk out of that no, place you know like a walking std or or w w how does that work no no, no it's you, like basic go ahead. Rules. it's like mm -hmm. no means no basic stuff like that and yeah they they are strict on condom use they would they would prefer that you do it i mean unless you got very good rapport with with uh, the couple then yeah you you might raw dog every now and then but yeah for the most part you're going to be using a condom okay right. okay yeah. and then um uh, i guess so so that's a rule for everybody other than if you if you're familiar with that person basically basically yes yeah yeah okay. well, what are your kind of coming in a little choppy just a little bit maybe you want to okay. fix that yeah, you're on um, now my my view on the swingers scene because I I did go to uh, a swinger club in Monterey, um, and I was mind blown. Uh, Nomadic, you got to check out that video. Uh, the host was like an eight point five, beautiful girl, and because of that experience, they wanted me to go back like mm. a week later. Like, hey, we got this other hot girl, and we heard about you. <laughs> Let's <laughs> right, right. return QB on to that scene in Mexico. Yeah, Baja <laughs> Tour is dead. Yeah. So <laughs> the way I, I'm not gonna lie, and there there was another guy that when he went to Guadalajara. Now this is kind of dangerous. You know, you got to use judgment, but he literally banged this girl in and and the, the guy's van like Uber Uber Eats. Like, hey. My hot girlfriend, we're coming up to your Airbnb, and she's in. She has to go to work at a certain time. Like it was between work and school, and yeah, he he banged. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, he he did his thing in the van, and everything was cool, no problems, no issue, and she was good looking. She was a very good looking girl. So. You kind of can use it as a Tinder Bumble option. Like, hey, I don't have time to take a girl on a on a on a date, but if this guy wants me to do his thing with his chick, okay, cool. You know? So okay, I wasn't being completely honest when I told that story. All right. All right. So I didn't meet them on Tinder or Bumble. I met them on this other site called uh which I, I what is it called? It's called like Field or something like that. Field. Yeah, it's it's basically it's basically like a swinger site, but okay. I I like unsubscribed that I after that whole sex party non experience, I unsubscribed mm -hmm. from it. But I think it's called Field, like F E E L D, and it basically okay. is like it's a little too freaky for me. But it's for okay. to each their, to each is their own. I, I no judgment, but it's like for right, people right. To like S and well, and all that. So if if you want something like casual. And yeah. you don't feel like going out and you're an extrovert, like you said. Mexico City has a ton of swinger clubs. I've only been to one in in, in um in Monterrey, but you know, just know that that is very common in Mexico. That's huge. Yep. I got a question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Woody. Okay, so two questions. One, um that so I never I, you know, I'm uh even with a girl that I'm right now, it, it took some time, you know, a couple of days to get to know people and get comfortable with, you know, the, the thing that comes to my mind, if you're going to a swingers club is like, Hey, you know, you're standing in on a, on a stage or a theater late, but naked. Right. So I don't know if that anxiety is a factor or, you know, or I guess, how was it in the beginning uh, for you guys to get into that, that space, you know, and, and do they have like private rooms? That's the other question. Yeah. Or, or how does that work? You're doing the club. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it depends. Um, on the club. You got also have a lot of organizations that do hotel parties and all of that stuff. Yes, yes. and 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 these girls are like fans only girls on 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 fans only. Like some of the girls are. Hmm. So, and not every guy is invited. So looks do matter even on the swinger scene too. Mm -hmm. I'm yep. being honest. Um. But again, I, I see it as more as another option than Tinder Bumble. Um, and if if they like you, they will refer you to other couples, and that's all you got to do. They, they come to your room, security. Now, 
again, you set your own rules. If you be like, hey, I don't want him watching me, you can say that. <laughs> you know? <laughs> hey, hey, I don't I don't want to be watched. You know, you can have a beer and chill out and watch the game while while I go at it with you, but I don't want to be watched. <laughs> while I can't <laughs> hear your wife. <laughs> hey, but there's a lot of decent girls in Mexico City too, right? Like just yeah. red. Oh, girl, a lot of beautiful women. Yeah. Look look at my channel, look at my IG. You'll see it everywhere in Mexico. Like Mexico City has a ton of beautiful women. But again, I'm gonna yeah. be honest, Mexico is not a huge P2P spot. So if you need that assistance, you gotta go to Tijuana. Correct. You don't even need to do that. I, I mean, I'm I, like I said, I'm not knocking anybody's hustle or whatever. But like, right? No, I just pull off. You just, you just, you just take off. a girl out for a drink. You buy her right. one drink, bro. It's like so, it's like a dollar. It's like a dollar, bro. You're good. Right. Like, like, that's not a guarantee, though. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it basically is. <laughs> but 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 no matter. Really, 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 Really quick, and I'm going to wrap it up. We're going to do a round table. You never – being in Mexico City, how long have you been down there? Two months. You never really had to do P2P at all, correct? Never. Nah. Mm -mm. Not once. That's all I want to hear. That's Not all once. I want to hear. That's yeah. great. That's you got to do it. I, I'm I a regular do. dude, bro. I'm 5'9 on a good day. You know, wow. yeah, I like I, mean, I do pretty well on Tinder in America, bro. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? So if I go over there, I was I just want to see like what 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 I would be able to pull, really. Probably yeah, a really, yeah. these little caramel drops over here, man. They on a different level, bro. They they like I'm not gonna knock anybody, American chicks right. or whatever, but these Latinas, man, they just they right. get you right in the heart, man. You meet a good and, and, you go good to and and nomadic, you not only dated Mexican girls in Mexico City, but Colombians, mm. but Venezuelan girls. So no, it's a melting Argentinian, Argentinian, Argentinian. Wow, um, crazy! One man. Argentinian, one Colombian, and then a bunch, a, a bunch of Mexican. <laughs> hey, you know what I realized too, bro? Um, the Latina chicks in America cannot compare to the homeland ones, or the homeland ones are like prettier, sexier. Like what? The, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They look different, you know. And the food here is mad cheap too. Yeah. The food is mad cheap. It tastes better. It's so tastes good. Better. It's so good. So I mean, like, yeah, uh, it's not always about women. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I love women, but it's like quality of life. Mm -hmm. Right. I, gotcha. Wow. Gotcha. Well, well, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. We're gonna do a round table. I'm gonna go around. Uh, Woody, I'm gonna start with you. Your your final thoughts and opinions and. Um, you know, whatever you like, whatever information you would like to share with us here on the stream. Woody? <laughs> Woody. Damn, Woody, we lost you. Um, all right, it's all good. Uh, Baja Tours, what you got for me, fam? Well, spring, spring break is coming. In, uh -huh. in Baja, California. So yeah, I'll be in the DR. I'm about to start getting a lot more clients for, for tours, especially at, uh, I'm going to have some new content dropping at, uh, at Papa's and Beers when they start doing all the concerts. Right. So yeah. And then I'm going to have Monterey coming in, in May. So yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to start, I'm going to, I'm going to start, uh, having a lot of good content coming. For for uh 2023. Okay, gotcha. Appreciate you, bro. All right. Um, you can chill backstage, but I'm gonna I'm gonna move around. Uh, Ulysses, what you got for me, bro? I will say, like, if you're really into Medellin, you think that it's hot to go over there, just go to Guadalajara, man. The women are very beautiful. There's a lot of career oriented women over there. There's a high middle class over there. I would say maybe just lay off Colombia, maybe just for like at least a year, let it cool down, you know. Uh, those are my final thoughts, I guess I would say. Okay, man. I appreciate you. Um, Murray, what's up, bro? All right, bro. Happy I just say like, I don't got like no bad blood between no one, MD or you. I believe you two guys are very cool. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, I don't, I'm not here to create enemies or be on anyone's side. You know what I'm saying? If a person is cool, 
they're just cool and, and that's it bro you know what i'm saying so it was great talking to you tonight man you know and at the end of the day bro like if anything happens man it just it's just what it is you know but i'm still cool with both of y'all guys there's no bad blood i'm not here to be on any one side i'm just a guy who just goes and panels and just like to explore new ideas with different people man you know what i'm saying right. i'm no, that's that's just it bro you know so and you're all you're always welcome here bro so i appreciate you coming by all right all right bro take it easy oh, okay nomadic bro it's good. Man, it's appreciate good. you coming through man people in Without. the chat were all like ah oh, man this guy gotta get a youtube channel bro but hey you do what you can i uh, appreciate i want to blow up my spot too much bro i don't want to blow right. up my spot <laughs> right 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 your final thoughts and opinions brody <clears throat> I'll just say uh, Mexico City is amazing. Uh, if anybody out there who doesn't have a passport, get one. Travel outside the states. It's pretty good out here. I'm headed to Guadalajara next. So if you're in Guadalajara, anybody out there, check me out. After that, I'll probably go into Baja, California. Uh, right. Maybe do, 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 you, do you have an Instagram or anything? Since I do have an Instagram. It's private though. <laughs> oh, okay. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. yeah. I like you know. I'm I'm like. Right. A, I'm not a content yeah. creator. I'm not a content creator. So Right, right. I understand people move in silence, but I really appreciate you dropping by. You're always welcome on this panel. And uh, yeah, I'm going to holler at you later, okay? Peace, peace. Okay, cool. All right. It's your boy signing off. QB Passport flexing. Um, unfortunate situation with the... Uh, American man, the American gringo, removing his girlfriend in Colombia. Uh, guys, understand that, look, be self-aware. Understand that these beautiful women in other countries, they're going to have options, all right? Don't be jealous. Don't be envious. It's up to you to have options as well. Or... Or you got to move there permanently and build on the relationship before you commit to a girl, okay? It's very, very important. Uh, I promise I will get Ecuador highlights coming soon. I, I had to jump on this. This was very big. And look, you know, hold these dating coaches accountable. You know, he's seen guys like David Bond and... John Anthony lifestyle. Oh, come to Columbia. Come to Columbia. And again, I'm not saying dating coaches are the reason for him to do what he did. But these guys will influence you and not give the actual reality that, hey, doing a long distance relationship is very, very serious. Okay. You know, think twice before you invest in a woman's body, you know, in surgery and and getting an apartment and, and moving there permanently. That's that's a lot. All right. Enjoy your time there. Enjoy the people there, but definitely be self-aware. So until then, it is your boy, QB Passport Flexing. I am finally monetized. Um, if you guys want to donate to the channel, so the next time I live stream, I will have the super chats, but if you want to donate right here on this live, that's the cash up there. I got Ecuador coming, um, and more cool stuff to the channel. So I will holler at you guys later out. Signing off.